Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Whiskey Wars on a Thursday night, filling in for Ben, Whiskey Uncensored. Thank you, Ben, for uh, giving me this slot tonight. Um, kind of some important life updates. Uh, some of you are kind of aware of what's been going on over the last couple of weeks. Some of you are not. And if I didn't reach out to you, then I apologize. It's been a, a heck of a couple of weeks. But anyway, cheers to you all, first of all. Thank you, everybody, for showing up. Appreciate that. Uh, truly. So, yeah. Um, and I already got pipe people hopping in the background. Thank you for that, guys. Uh, yeah, I could use the hangout tonight. But I'll do the update first. And uh, I'll probably reiterate later on because I'm sure, you know, it'll take a little while for everybody to kind of get in here. But uh, some of you kind of know that my dad has been having uh, heart issues for a while now. He's been dealing with AFib since uh, a little over a year ago now. Um, well, last Tuesday, uh, he could not get his heart rate to come down. And this was following an ablation. He had an ablation done about a month ago and it kind of made things worse if, if I'm honest. And, uh, so last Tuesday he went to the hospital. He'd been, uh, his body was holding a lot of water, like 30 pounds of extra water over since the ablation happened. So like over a month's period of time, it just kind of kept building and building and of course, that's bad for your heart. Um, and then on top of that, um, you know, he had this AFib still going. And then as well, um, really high heart rate, like around 170 consistently, uh, high blood pressure. Things were not good, is the short of it. So we go to the hospital Tuesday night. Um, he hadn't been really working with me much either because he just wasn't feeling good. He was like dizzy, short of breath, just run down, wasn't sleeping good. Uh, things were crappy. So he goes to the hospital Tuesday night and they can't get him fixed either. Of course, you know, our local hospital is quite small, uh, to say the least. Um, and so they decide to send him over to the next largest town, which is Somerset. Uh, that, some of you know where I live. I live kind of in the middle of nowhere under Lake Cumberland. Um, and so nonetheless, uh, we get sent up there late Tuesday night. Uh, they try various medicines to get his heart rate to come down without really any success. Um, and then continued that same process kind of Wednesday and, uh, still not real successful. Um, and then Wednesday night, um, around eight, eight 30, uh, dad went into cardiac arrest and, uh, we were in the room when it happened. And, uh, that was, that was difficult. Yeah. Um, but, uh, they got, they got him back and, uh, thankfully, um, you know, no brain damage or anything. He was only out for seven minutes. They, we were in the ICU anyway, so they were in there immediately. Um, and everything thankfully, uh, worked out. Okay. But, uh, as you would imagine, that was, uh, an intense night as was the next day. They put him on a ventilator, uh, immediately after that event. And, um, he was on a ventilator for about 36 hours and then oxygen following that. Um, and as far as we can tell, uh, like I said, no, no brain damage at all. Cause that's always a concern when your heart stops, you know, the, the oxygen stops flowing to your brain. And so there's always that potential, but that seems fine. Um, thankfully, uh, and, but then, you know, we, and so then after that happened with the cardiac arrest, then they moved us up to Baptist health, which is, uh, a very good, they have a very good heart, uh, unit. So they drove us up there Thursday evening. And we were there until last night late. We, we came back into town uh, last night late. So that's why I haven't been around. Now, thankfully, now dad's doing as good as he can be. He has a pacemaker slash defibrillator. Some of you may be familiar with that, uh, have relatives, or maybe you yourselves are dealing with that. Um, but thankfully, he is mostly okay. He has a bunch of broken ribs from the chest compressions and things like that. Um, they get them on some new meds to kind of regulate things. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, it was a crappy week to say the least. Uh, not fun at all. 
Yeah, but uh, learned a lot. Learned a lot of things uh, about the heart and breathing and <laughs> all that kind of stuff. And we got really good at reading the monitors and stuff. But yeah, that's that's where I've been. Um, yeah, hanging out in hospitals for like a week straight. Uh, yeah, so that's the big update. I'm sure I will say it again later for those that missed it. But yeah, that's that was a, a quick summation if you're just popping in. Uh, is that we were in the hospital with my dad because he had he went into cardiac arrest last Wednesday. So, and that was a kind of long drawn out event getting him back right again, or at least as close to normal as we can get him now. So, anyway, let's uh, let's have a few pours. I could use some and uh, hang out, shall we? So we already got John in the background. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. Good to see you, man. Well, uh, uh, good to have you back home. Yeah. It's good. It's good to be back. Yeah, uh, man, it was a hell of a week. And for those of you that uh, some of you knew, some of you didn't know, um, it just it it, it kind of got overwhelming responding to everyone. Honestly, <laughs> I mean, it, you know, I appreciate everybody checking up on me and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it was much appreciated, but you know, at the same time, we had a lot going on. So after the third or fourth day, I just got tired of texting. <laughs> <laughs> so, I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. Out. Um, so yeah, don't if I didn't if I didn't update you, don't feel bad at all. Uh, it was just uh, it was slightly overwhelming. So uh, let, let's uh, let's see what we got in chat here. Uh, great shot saying I'm waiting with bated breath and a pour. There we go. Uh, this just gave me a great reason why I should. Yeah, there you go. Everybody grab a pour and hop on if you have the time. Uh, what the heck is this? Uh, I can't stay up. Okay. And uh, also, uh, Deland, thank you for filling in last Thursday. It was kind of last minute. And I said, hey, man, because uh, he was telling me he started up a channel. And I was like, you know, why don't you uh, take my spot Friday? And I was I was hoping to support him more and kind of send out the link and stuff. And then I got busy doing things at the hospital, helping dad, and didn't really uh, do that much. But it looks like you guys had a, a pretty decent sign last Friday. And uh, thank you, Deland, for filling in and Dipping, uh, or actually, just you just completely dove in the deep in there with the lives. So I just, <laughs> yeah, but it looked like it went well. Jig's in the house as well. That fellow there, too generous. Um, thank you again, Jig's. Uh, so Jig's, funny enough, he he called me just out of the blue uh, and asked me, um, you know, what is typically my my favorite uh ecbp batches and said usually the c's and he said okay well, i'm gonna send you a little bit of uh c917 with ben because ben was up there hanging out with uh jigs and so i was uh expecting a sample <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but no no it, it's a it's a whole bottle i split it with ben uh, yeah so jigs uh you're freaking legend man thank you so much uh yeah. it's fantastic thank you buddy uh wow yeah too generous um well, uh, thank you jigs for the uh, hand delivery i got the other day too there we go yeah i think you're on that list too oh yeah yeah uh well i got i got them actually hand delivered uh in oh, box okay. from from nice. ben yeah um and speaking of you know we talked about me and ben were talking about this because we hung out as well in kentucky here and uh we're gonna we're i'm gonna once Ben's back, we're just going to send out a text to everybody that has the jig samples that we put off for like six months now. And if you can make it, you can make it. If you can't, you can't, but we're going to do it. So uh, we're not going to wait around for everybody to uh, get their act together. We're just going to, so we're going to send out the group text to everybody like a week. Uh, we'll figure out a day. And if you can make it, you can, if you can't, you can't. Um, but we need to, yeah, we need to get this done. So, uh, Peter White saying cheers all was wondering YouTube aimless until there you go. Yeah. Awesome, man. Right. And uh, so you guys know we will be live tomorrow night as well on mash and metal um, over there. We'll be having a grunge night. I was trying to get that, that uh, link posted before this, but I didn't have time. Yeah. Cause that was supposed to be last Friday's um, stream because of Lane Staley and Kurt Cobain's deaths being the same day, which is last Friday. Uh, but, uh, things happened, so we didn't get to that, but, uh, we will be definitely doing that, uh, this Friday. So yeah, have your, you know, favorite Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, Alice in Chains, 
SGP, Nirvana songs, et cetera, ready to go. Also, great shot. Welcome, buddy. Good to see you, man. Welcome, brother. Yeah. Uh, sorry about your daddy. You know, uh, I kind of went through some of that with mine um, last couple of years ago. You know, he he wound up with uh, passing away from complications due to COVID, but he already had heart problems and stuff. He'd already went through, you know, quadruple bypass and, you know, a bunch mm-hmm. of other stuff. So, yeah. Uh, but, hey, glad your dad is hanging in there. Yeah. Still kicking. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, I tell you, watching your dad go into cardiac arrest is not something I would wish on anybody. That's not no. uh, not a fun thing to, to do. No. Um, but, you know, like I said, I mean, thankfully, we we're already in the ICU. Um, they yeah, moved oh, him down. To, yeah. Um, and he, you know, my dad being my dad, he, he didn't even want to go to the hospital in the first place. But thank God he did. Yeah. Because uh, they live way out in the boonies. And it's, you know. Even if the the ambulance left the second they got the nine one one call, it'd be twenty minutes just to get there. Yeah. Um, well, you know he's he's old school like we are, you know, and yeah, uh, we're, we'll be all right. You know, rolls around in the dirt a little bit, and fuck, we'll be all right. You <laughs> yeah. know, for sure, uh, man. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we're we're very thankful that he went and that he was in the right place at the right time. And I mean, and they were, I mean, as soon as he flatlined, they were in there in like 10 seconds and just yeah. immediately got to work mm-hmm. and, you know, so yeah, it, yeah but, I mean, damn, broke there, a couple of his ribs. How fucking hard are they? Sheesh. Oh uh, yeah. Well, I mean, having witnessed it, uh, real chest compressions, you know, cause, um, Ben was saying, he, I guess his dad went through that as well. And, uh, he said, you know, when you're doing real chest compressions, you're, you're going to break some ribs. That's just, uh, part well, of the deal. So yeah, but you can be a little easier with that, you know, and still have good, 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 good compressions, but not break a damn rib. Come on. Well, uh, yeah. So he has ribs two through seven on both sides broken. Damn. Yeah. They broke a lot of ribs. Yeah. Homie's got. Oh, that's hard. That's. Oh, I, I feel for him. That's yeah. I mean, that's the big thing now is just getting his breathing right again because he also yeah. after that he also had two collapsed lungs and. Well, they probably poked the damn lung with a breakdown broken rib. Jesus. Well, we were we were worried about that, but they they did all the X-rays and all that kind of crap, and they said no. It was just you know from the chest compressions, you know, just yeah. pushing down on you. Oh, um, okay. But yeah, uh, it was uh, it was intense to say the least. Yeah. Um, hey, slap shot. Cheers, buddy. Good to see you, man. Uh, let's see here. We got Roscoe in the house. As well, cheers, Dang, buddy. Groovy. All right. <laughs> Woods in the house as well. Cheers, good to see you. Joe, the sample guy. Cheers to all you beautiful people. Shit's in the house. Marty in the house. Bauer in the house. Look at all these fantastic people. William Hall. Cheers, buddy. Look at all. Yeah, hit that like, please. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Who else? Who else we got in the house? Yeah, man. Appreciate yeah. that. Jigs. Yeah, Jig. Jigs called like not but thirty minutes after we walked in the the hospital here in Wayne County. Um. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> that that was uh, uh, the only highlight of this uh, the whole trip was uh, Jig sending me ECVP. Uh, yeah, th- thanks, Bill. Appreciate that, brother. Um, I still got a bottle to send you, but I'm holding on to it because I know I'm going to buy you one or two other ones before I yeah, send that one. Yeah, so, yeah. And uh, and Ben hooked it up, so I, I got a, another Rebecca Creek from Ben. He uh, oh. all the way from, all the way from New York. Wow, um, I didn't know they shipped it that far out. Yeah, yeah, I guess they're uh, shipping out to New York now. So all you New York, New York folk or those in the the New York area, you can get Rebecca Creek now. Well, that's good because uh, I've been looking around here for some replacements, you know, to stock up a little bit. Nada, I ain't seen squat. People yeah. have got the word out already. Thanks, asshole. Yeah, you know? I, I may have had something to do with that. Yeah, uh, these dang influencers, you know. I won't <laughs> shut up about it, so. <laughs> His whiskey tube but, people. Man, I, I, have, I have one buddy online now, and he's actually working at the distillery. And uh, he said they have two barrels left right now of the of the Spanish oak. That's all yep. they got left right now. Well, Mark, I, I don't think I need to say it, but if you find new bottles, just you don't even have to ask me. Just I'll oh, send yeah. you the money. <laughs> well, the, the bottle I got for you is the higher proof one, the one twenty eight. Yeah, this one's fairly. Out. Let's see what is this. This is a uh, one twenty seven three. Oh, it's close. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so also, uh, Delan, glad it went well. Glad the guys helped out. Yeah, we have a great community here. And, uh, yeah, anyone that hasn't yet, please, uh, as Peter White did, go sub to Whiskey Nature. Show uh, Delan the love there. Yeah, yeah, for Appreciate sure. That. If, so, if someone could okay. uh, actually, one of you mods don't mind dropping his link just to make it easy on folks. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, we had a good time there last Friday. Cool, man. Yeah. Yeah, I, I popped in for like 10 minutes, and I wanted to actually hop on, but then we got busy doing stuff with that again um yeah so uh wood saying grunge night tomorrow that works out perfect i'm hanging out with the wife tomorrow awesome yeah uh so yeah, hopefully you guys are excited about that i know uh, a few folks in the last mash metal were kind of requesting that so i thought why not perfect time to do it uh celebrating the deaths of two of the biggest front men in grunge um let's see here uh also groovy in the house miss groovy there Cheers, Groovy. Good yeah. to see you, buddy. Uh, I got, almost, I've got to hang out with him a few times. Awesome guy. Yep. Yep. Travis is good people. I've never hung out with him in person, but uh, on here, and he, he seems like good people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, sure, Keith says, almost any time you go through CPR, it breaks trips. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty intense. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, if you aren't... Uh... Okay. Uh, let's see. That's, uh, is that, um, collapsed lungs? Is that what that means? I, I think so. <laughs> I don't know. That's, that uh, sounds, sounds maybe like that. That's, it's way over my head as far yeah. as uh, medical terminology yeah. goes. Uh, see, I haven't seen any Rebecca Creek Spanish Oak in about a month. I have one open and one sealed for the future. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to stock up. Yeah. And that goes for anybody. If anybody sees Rebecca Creek, just shoot me a text. Uh, Gotcha. And uh, I'll just be like, yep, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and I will Venmo, PayPal, whatever is your preferred uh, mode of payment. Yeah. Um, but uh, that said, not this week. Uh, <laughs> I need to make some money. I've been uh, not working for a week. So anyway, uh, there you go. Okay, cool. Yep. Yeah. Well, so... Groovy Lava Scooter Medic. There you go. He yeah. would know. Rebecca Creek is what I have in my glass right now. Ooh. The uh, the bottle I got from you. Uh, uh, the, uh, what is it? One twenty four proof is something like range. that. Yeah, I set, that down, range. I set it down here because I don't want to finish it. I'm going to pour this into a smaller bottle and label it. And I want to kind of have uh, a collection of Rebecca Creeks. Ah, compare the the different proofs too. Yeah, yeah. Compare those different yeah. barrels and stuff. Z, I see you, but it says device disconnected. The device not. Yeah, I had to jump through about three to four different hoops to jump on tonight. Oh, okay, interesting. For for some reason, it maybe want to download um, the Streamyard app and then go through that. I don't know what the deal was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I saw that they did an update, and everything. All the layout is totally different now. So I guess that probably came with that. Uh, David, be in the house. Cheers to you as well, buddy. Good to see you. Rebecca Creek is usually on the shelf at Total Wine near me. Got a brown water tater pick. A f oh, that, there you go. Awesome, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. Those Spanish oaks. That's where it's at. Those things are money. Heck yeah. Hey, yeah. Oh, always a good choice there, David B. And yeah, for sure, Groove. Yeah. Knowledge never goes away. Um, so what have you guys been getting into whiskey wise? New whiskeys, everybody? Mm, scotch. Right. Oh, okay. Well, speaking of, um, got a 17 year old uh, space side, the Kirkland deal oh, there. Nice. It's, uh, it's pretty tasty. Not peated, but uh, still pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I've been delving way off into the peat, and uh, I think I'm getting a little peat blind on some of it. Okay. You know, to where, you know, like, uh, like a Lechegg and uh, Lafroy. I'm like, I don't know. Put some peat in it. Come on. What the heck? You know. Yeah, there you go. But There's the Z. What's up, buddy? On right now what? is uh, the Chegg. So, StreamYard changed their fucking format. And they want you to log in and then, then create an account, which I didn't have to create. But they're not just letting you in here. Yeah. So, be, Interesting. be, be aware of that, Sean. 
I'll see. Right, I, well, I, I pretty much do the same. It's I use the YouTube mobile Thanks, app Byron. on my phone. Here, and then when I click on the stream yard, it just has me sign in with Google, which I've already signed into YouTube with. Well, you know, the, the and I do Patreon, as you know. Uh, Patreon, I can't activate it off my device. I can do it off my computer, but not my device. Mm -hmm. And I sat there and I got on a 21090 uh, stream yard, and I actually activated another account just to get on their fucking panel. Because huh. it, wouldn't, it wouldn't let me on there. It didn't recognize me. I saw what I'm going to try to do, Sean, is I don't want to kill Patreon on the computer, but I'm going to kill Patreon on the fucking phone and just try to reset everything and see if it works. There you go. Yeah. God, these guys are so freaking obnoxious, brother. Yeah, technology is great when it works. <laughs> yeah. Well, this actually doesn't look bad. It's different, you know. Yeah. I'm all right with it. God damn. And yeah, and yeah, Mark, the, the bar is looking great, man. Um, yeah. Yeah. You got it completely filled up now. Yeah, it's yeah. good. Oh no, there's always room for more. Oh Probably, yeah, <clears throat> most of the shelf <clears throat> I can put at least two deep on it, and yeah. uh, <clears throat> right now it's only like one deep, so it's not that bad. And I think last I counted, it was about a hundred and sixty-five, hundred seventy bottles. Yeah, you need to get that four hundred. So a lot less than you know a lot of other people, but you know. I'm not out to collect. I mean, every bottle on the shelf is open. And I've had, mm -hmm. you know, at least this much out of every bottle. Except for, let's see, there's there's two bottles on the shelf right now that are not open. One's a Bellmead Reserve, and uh, one's an Old Early Time. There you That's go. The only bottles that are not open right, right. now. Mm. Everything else is open, and, you know, if, if you come over to the bar and you need to pour, I'll hook you up. There you or, go. Or, you know, if you want a sample? We can hook that up too. <laughs> Whiskey's made yeah. to be shared, baby. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, I was bringing all these bottles back from uh, Lexington and stopped at my sister's place. And, and my uh, brother in law's parents had just got back from a trip from Texas. And so uh, he also grabbed a couple of bottles of whiskey, which uh, I'll have to. Send that brand to you fellows down in Texas and see who is closest because I'd like one of y'all to snag one. And maybe you guys want to snag one for yourselves as well. Um, what is it? Uh, let's see here. I shot a picture of it yesterday. Um, okay. I, I don't I don't like this new phone. My pictures aren't it's not like a thing for pictures now. Let's see you don't here. have like a album? All right, so this isn't the brand name. <laughs> this is the all right. So, who lives near uh, Belverde, Texas? Anybody know of Belverde, Texas? Uh, I've never heard of that one. Here, I'll, I'll, I'll spell it out in chat, um, like so. I guess it goes through StreamYard. Yeah. Anyway. Um, but they're doing some interesting stuff. It's just a two grain blend, um, and uh, it's just oh. it's um, malted barley and corn, eighty twenty. Hmm. Um, It'll be a sweet one then. Yeah, yeah, uh, very malty, but um, some interesting notes though as well. So that I don't know. They're well, so they're doing small barrels. They're doing fifteen gallon barrels instead of big barrels. Dang. Um, and you know it's a tiny operation. Their, uh, I mean, their their whole process is just one building. So they got tiny little stills. Um, Fifteen yeah. gallon barrel center in Texas. Uh, yeah. You get maybe at the most two years out of it. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> only a five hour drive away. There you go. Okay. Uh, <laughs> never heard of that one. Okay. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll have to check with all all the Texas folk and see who's closest. Uh, maybe nobody. <laughs> does. I don't know. Well, I've got Mark, I've got a uh, pick oh, from Lone Elm with the Crusader stuff. It's spent yeah. five years in a 15 gallon barrel, and it's dark. Really? Oh my God, I bet it's like coffee. It's really dark, but it's the, the wheat whiskey from Lone Elm, so it's actually really fruity. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, a wheat a great can, bottle. <clears throat> yeah. They can handle a little okay. bit more. Something like a, a rise down here. They can handle a little bit more age down here in Texas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So it looks like Groovy is the closest. Five minutes away. That is uh, that is quite close. Oh, damn. So what's the closest San Antonio? Well, uh, here you go, Groovy. I'll give you the full address. Um, what's the name of the distillery? I don't know because I didn't take a picture of that. I oh. took a I took a picture of the address. <laughs> oh, well, okay. it's it's Chaplin this it's Chaplin Distillery, but that's not that's not the that's not the name on the bottle. Oh, okay. Um, but, but here we go. Here is the the and full everything done in black and white and silent. Then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Heck yeah. Charlie Chaplin was the man, baby. <laughs> Cool. Gotta wear the derby if you show up there. Mm. I grew up that shit, John. It was the uh, automatic piano. Yep. And it was in the pizza place. And it was Charlie Chaplin on the screen. The one I grew up with on PBS, which I can't believe the guy didn't die, was Harold Lloyd. (laughs) Yeah. The guy's like hanging around to a clock like 20 stories up. Who's yeah. the PBS dude that he always did the Louisiana shit? So there's the full address. So now you guys can figure out exactly how close you are. Um, okay. But yeah, if uh, anybody gets by there, uh, there's a few bottles I'd, I'd like to pick up. But again, I'll, like give me a week or two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I need to make some money. Uh, no worries. Yeah, there's always that. Yeah, I, I don't know about that one. Mm. Hey, B Bar. Hey, yeah, B-Bar. but um, they so they do uh they do a single barrel. Uh, well, everything is single barrel technically, yeah. but they they do this uh interesting, I guess it's like a blend of sorts, um, that has some more floral notes, but so everything is so they everything is one ten proof. Uh, except for they have a honey pecan whiskey, which usually I would be completely out on because I thought yeah. I'm thinking like liqueur, but no, it's not. No. It's not a liqueur. They actually put honey and pecans in their mash. Yeah. So it's it's okay. part of the mash that they do, and it's uh it's actually pretty good. I was it was surprisingly good. It's only 85 proof, but really flavorful. It's like a a good like first pour of the day kind of thing. Yeah. Just nice general sweetness, easy sipper. I should probably send you some of this one then. What what do you got there? Uh it's it's it, that's made to here in Bastrop, Texas. And Copper Copper look shot. At the, look at the dark on that one. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, it's uh what, what? it's a hundred proofer, but it's uh I think they age it with pecan. Uh and they help they also have this <clears> one, <throat> which is a sweet potato shine. And it's quite good. Holy crap. I mean, it's yeah, okay. it, it, it's a shine. Hang on, see. Yeah, but uh, and and the bad. other one is just a, a bourbon mark. Yeah, it's a bourbon, uh, but I think they use a uh, pecan uh, when they age it. Okay, and it's it's definitely got pecan in it. Uh, if you like the, it's a, it's one of those slap you in the face kind of pecan. Okay. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, so what's interesting, I like the flavor of pecans, but I don't like eating pecans because of like the waxy nature of them. Yeah. <laughs> um, this one, it comes across like that. It's got that kind of waxy, um, you know how the, the husk of a pecan is? Yeah. It's kind of, yeah. kind of that kind of a slap you upside the head with, you know? Interesting. Okay. Yeah. I'll send you a sample of it. Sounds Both good. Both of man. those, actually. The, Speaking uh, of. The, the shine, y'all think you'll really like the the pecan whiskey? Eh, maybe not so much. We'll see. Yeah. Speaking of, I, I forget you got you got the samples I sent you, right? Yep. The the goodie box. Okay. And I I can't remember what did I give you a coaster. I feel like I did, right? Yeah. Uh, and and uh, like yeah, there right go. yeah, there we go. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> baby, I love it. And uh, did did I did I send you a uh, topper as well, Glenn Topper? Yep. Okay. All right. I thought I did. But I just couldn't remember. Uh, pecans, yeah, no, no pecans. There we go. Yeah, there's that topper, courtesy of Top Dog. Yeah, John doing great stuff. Yeah, so uh, Groovy only 21 minutes away from uh, that distillery. Um, good stuff, man. Yeah, uh, I know Groovy, you're not drinking a ton these days, but um, 
it's it's some interesting stuff. the the profile is is pretty unique that's what is interesting to me i'm not going to say it's my favorite bourbon ever but uh it's unique enough that i i want to get some so right. bring some backbone prime pretty good for 33 on sale hey there you go nice man the pecans yeah how does everybody say it? Uh, pecan is the right way, right? Are we agreed that yeah, pecan? pecan. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I grew you up. Could, in you could say pecan, like Jason. <laughs> yeah, pecan. Oh, and uh, speaking of, of Jason, uh, I forgot. I forgot to highlight this. Uh, Wood saying, "Did y'all see Jason from Ash and Drum get trashed in the comments this week after pushing a whiskey pyramid scheme?" I did not. I was busy doing other things. Yeah, he said um, last night he actually pulled the the video down because of the comments. So what what was the issue? Oh, uh, it's an NFT. Oh, uh, okay, gotcha. So I really didn't I didn't watch the video, so I don't have all the information. I see. NFT. That's such a weird thing. The NFT mm -hmm. deal. Uh, also, cheers to you, Rob. I don't know if it cheers, Jerry. Like, what's up, buddy? Good to see you. Uh, there's a company in South Carolina making a pecan-infused Canadian whiskey that it's very good. My wife loves it. <laughs> Seventy proof. Yeah. So, see, that's a, so that's a, a liqueur, right? And that's what, I, that's what I was expecting in this. I was thinking, oh, it's going to be a liqueur. It's going to be super sweet and gross. Um, but it's it's a proper whiskey. It's eighty-five proof. And there's no sugar added or anything. It's just it's a Honey pecan uh, bourbon. So I mean, they have bourbon on the label, which I know that that doesn't really mean much. But yeah, I guess uh, they actually just put honey and pecan in the mash. So kind of interesting. Uh, oh, there you go. Okay. Either either one. Pecan. Pecan. <laughs> pecan is the only way to say it. Be right back. Turn it on. Uh, you said you don't like eating pecans, but like butter pecan and turtle, my turtle sundaes are my favorite for ice cream. Well, you know, so I agree that that's one of my favorite flavors of ice cream, but I'm one of those people that I just suck the ice cream off the pecan and spit the pecans out. You yeah. suck the ice cream off the nuts, that's... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Clean, the, clean the nuts off. No, like, uh, I just, <laughs> it's like that, that gritty, waxy texture. I just, uh, like I said, I don't mind the flavor. I just, the texture is like, it's like chewing glass or something. I don't know. <laughs> or like onions, you know, when you chew onions, like raw onions, it's that same. I don't yeah. know. There's... <sighs> I but, you know. I thing with raw tomatoes that I can't, unless they're diced up real small, like nachos or something. If it's a slice of tomato on a sandwich, I'm out. Yeah, yeah, I feel the same. Yeah, it's squishy and gross. <laughs> uh, my wife buys these little bottles of butter pecan moonshine that's too sweet for me, but it tastes and smells really good. Yeah, so again, I imagine that has all kinds of sugar and crap added. Um, and so that's why this was pleasantly surprising that it actually tasted like a whiskey and not bull crap. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You can pee in the can, but you can't pee on a can. There you go. <laughs> Edward's turtle pie is so good. Yeah, you know, growing up in the South, pecan pie is a huge thing. Like any church picnic uh, gathering, you know, any of those kind of things, there's going to be pecan pie. Uh, and I was, I never partook because I just, yeah, the texture ruins it for me. I appreciate the the flavor of like the, what is the stuff underneath? It's not like a jello. I don't know. I don't even know yeah, what that stuff like a, is. Like a caramel or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't I don't know what it's made from. Um well they but, just they just toast the fucking pecans, they put it on top. You're right. That's yeah, but pie, then that's pie, what I'm right. saying. Like the actual pie part is something. I I don't bake, so <laughs> I don't know what it's, it's mainly made. sugar. Yeah, I'm sure it's mainly sugar, yeah. Uh that that part's tasty. I like that part. I only bake on certain holidays, but <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, there you go. Okay, pecan pie filling is corn syrup and eggs. Fair enough. Ooh, and yeah. I'm, sure, I'm sure a crap load of sugar. Yeah, uh, Cairo syrup. Okay, Cairo. Uh, there, here you go. Uh, Burma School, Brian. Cheers, buddy. Good to see you, man. Cheers, Brian. Cheers, Brian. 
So I was going to ask you, uh, I know uh, great shots on the Lecheg. Brian, uh, John, what are you getting into tonight? Well, uh, just a little bit. This is an older MGP pick. It's actually good times. It's not finished. Oh, this yeah, okay. Like straight bourbon pick. This one's really good. Nice. And Some local group here. Looked like I saw the bottom end of a uh, Miller Lite there. Okay, and some Heaven Hill. <laughs> yep, there you go. No, I, don't, I don't play it, brother. I'm all in. All day, every day. <laughs> we are aware. We are aware. <laughs> there, <see? laughs> Can't drink all day if you don't start in the morning. Yep. That's right. If you're going to set a goal, you might as well fulfill it. Um, yes, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to... I don't know if Jigs is still around, but I'm gonna have. I, I, I do want to point out if you, if you can see the door, which is like the right to the left of me. Oh, yeah. Not this. I got a. That's that's the sun going down into the bathroom here in Arizona. Oh, okay. That's the fucking light from it. Got a, got a few samples for John. Oh, oh nice. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, I'm gonna try that tire fire. I was dumb enough to say, you know, I'll try it. Yeah. <sighs> Well, I, I, got you. I, I, I did you decent because I got tire fire for one, but then uh, I poured you some of Irene Tan's uh, pick from Glen Scotia oh, to make yeah, up it's, for it. Ben's and got that bottle holding for me right now. No, I, I just want that bottle. I, pour, I poured you uh, some of this one. Cool. I tell you, that's the one I'm I'm looking forward to there, Great Shot. Yeah. Yeah, that one's, yeah. That one's different. That's... Uh, Fairly expensive bottle, actually, but uh, it was quite good and uh, unlike any other Balconis that I've ever had, really. Okay, cool. And, uh, Shit's in the house. What's up, Adam? Hey, Adam. Hey, Adam. Hey, guys. Hey, brother. Good see you, buddy. Well, I'm sad to see your hey, hair hasn't grown. Oh, I'm proud. Feel proud of your dad, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you got through it, man. Yeah, there, you know, there was like, you know, in, in that situation, there's like multiple hurdles you got to get through. So first, you know, not being dead is the big one. Yeah, um, yeah. And then there's the whole ventilator thing and how your lungs are going to respond after that. And like, who is the person that comes back, you know? Um, and then, you know, and then there was just all the kind of the lung recovery, which he's kind of still in that phase. But yeah, it was a, uh, it was a long week, but yeah, man. Uh it went as good as it could have, I suppose. Yeah. That's all you can hope for, man. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, thank you, Adam. Appreciate that, man. Yeah. 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 Well, at least he's still here kicking. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers to that. Yeah. Um, that. Yeah, man. It was a, it was a hell of a week. Cheers, guys. <laughs> That is damn good. Just pour a little bit of that uh, C nine one seven. Oh, <laughs> Jake's out doing it himself there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Can't God. go wrong. Can't go wrong with those mm -hmm. old sea badges. You know, there's just they like a the best, don't they? The sea badges. That? It's like they hold on to the good stuff to like the sea batch, and then that's when they, the good stuff comes out. <laughs> that's... I don't know. It seems that way, but also you think like it's seasonal too, right? So maybe, yeah. maybe the age of those barrels, once they mature around the sea batch, they just end up being better barrels. I, I don't know, but I've always been a sea sea batch for. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, usually I am. I have had some. I mean, there has been some really great B batches, but um, an A's are kind of hit or miss in my opinion. But they're, they're, if they're, you they're, haven't they're, tried they're, the uh, the 124, let me know. I got it. You got it? Right there. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that in a second. Uh, I'm actually quite liking it. I know not everybody is, but uh, of course, this was my only bottle of whiskey for a few days up in Lexington. So, mm. uh, but yeah, it's uh, I, I dig it. A lot of barrel spice, which I'm into. Um, okay. You got a lot of cinnamon on it. I didn't, I didn't get the bottle, but I tried it. And uh, it was like so cinnamony. Yeah, it is. It is very cinnamony. Lot, lots of red hots going on. It's, yeah. Uh, oh, nice really? Smash. Okay. Which I I like that. But if you're not into that, I could see why you wouldn't like it. But um, well, I haven't cracked the bottle yet, so I'm not know. Shred in the house. What's up, buddy? Good to see you, man. Hey, Shredward. To Shredward. Hey, but yeah, uh, yeah, Jigs. Thank you again. If you're still listening, buddy. But uh, thank you again. Sending a whole bottle of C917. That was. Uh, 
pretty epic. Yeah, and so Jigs calls me up as I'm in the hospital and asks me, he's like, so do you usually prefer C's or B's? And I'm like, dude, I've never even had either one. I'm just guessing here. It's a shot in the dark. Like, the C sounds probably pretty good. <laughs> I'd never had anything before. The, the earliest I'd ever had before this, well, I mean, I have an 18 that I picked up. But before that uh, was an 8, uh, 119. I'd never had anything earlier than that. So, yeah, I'd never had any of this, the 17. So, no idea. C919 is like my all-time fave batch. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, and that, before that's I got my into goal. It. That's my goal this year because I don't. I don't want to like just buy a bunch of bottles. I want to start filling out my ECBP line. Um, I now have everything from twenty forward, um, and I got an eighteen and a seventeen. I want to fill out all of those. Mm, so okay. You know, to your question, John, usually yeah, I'm fine with just a, a good B cup's fine. You know, I'm not uh, more of an ass guy. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, you know. But, I mean, you know, I'm not you complaining if they're on. bigger. I'm never, like, sad. Well, you know, it gets it's, too big. You know, it's, 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 it's like, it's oh, bad. your boobs are too big. This is a Don't deal breaker. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I've, never, I've never been disappointed when they're bigger. Yeah, it's, always, um, it's always nice to have something to hold on to. That's ain't no sense getting smothered now. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there is a point where it's too much. When, when, when you're going is, for a nice motorboat and you get smothered, nah, that's a little too much. You know, so. There is certainly a point where it's too much. Do you ever get to try the, uh, the old pirate bottle barrel proof no. ones? Those are, those are fire, dude. I, I had one, but it was, I don't know, it was so long ago. It was like five ish years ago, and it was at a bar. And uh, it was kind of before my palate was matured, and so it just kind of blew me out. So I didn't really yeah. appreciate it. Um, but I had a pirate bottle. I couldn't tell you which one it was. But yeah, there you go. Why are you feeling the love? <laughs> Triple G hanging on the stream with Marty earlier uh, on Bourbon Bounty. We were mm -hmm. Marty on the stream with us. Oh, okay, awesome. Good for him. So what about, uh, what about you, Adam? Any cool pickups recently, or what are you getting into lately? No, not really buying whiskey these days, dude. Yeah. Slacker? I had to, I had to pick up one of these just to have something in the cabinet. <laughs> wow, well, yeah. Okay. okay. Well, well also, I'm prepping, I'm prepping for Hey, there we go. I'm prepping for a move in a couple months, so I'm trying oh, to okay. slim down, but also just not super into the whiskey buying. So. Yeah. yeah. It'll kill you after a while. No, I'll take it. I'll, I love the vices, but uh, I'll pick it back up when I get to Vegas. Oh, is that where you guys went to Vegas? That's the plan, yeah. Oh, man. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Go what's, hang out uh, with Anthony, Bourbon Neophyte. Yeah. Yeah. What's, what's, uh, what's pulling you down that way? Um. So we got our wife's got family down there, so we got that support system, and – Kids, dad is down there. Her kids. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So it's we we've been thinking about getting out of Utah for a while, and then we started looking around, and that seemed like the best place for us to land. Just at least the next five years with our kids being so young. So right. Wow. Well, well, yeah. good for you, man. Yeah, we might set roots. Who knows? Yeah. Give it Anthony, a shot, I'll have anyway. to buy you a cool hat. You can be the co-host. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not my thing at all, Adam. But if it if that does it for you, you know, go for it. Whatever makes you happy. <laughs> me. I hear you, dude. I I am sick of the snow, though. So, oh yeah, yeah there you go. Not a lot of chance of that there. Um, no. <laughs> I don't think that's. I don't think that's how that snow. goes, Fred. I'm uh I'm ready to head toward the islands here sometime soon, mm. but. At least a beach. Yeah, see, I want to go the other direction, Mark. I want to like head up to Alaska or something. Oh goodness! But right. so, more power so to jumped, you, brother. I, I jumped out yeah, of work. All the snow. I don't. I don't want it. <clears throat> I jumped out of work, and it was supposed to be ninety-three today. My truck said ninety-seven degrees, and I was like, "What the fuck, man?" That sounds <laughs> awful. <laughs> it's like in my house, it's cool because I got ceiling fans on. 
but I'm like, it's too early. <laughs> I will say to that point, uh, Z, the day drinking makes more sense when you remind me that you live in hell. Uh, <laughs> yeah. As long as you've got cold beer, you know you're good to go. That's right. It's got to stay hydrated. It's important in the heat. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to adapt to that heat for sure. Yeah. Got to be white. So, I don't. Are you much for the whole gambling scene? There is that doing anything for you? No, or? I mean that's probably a good thing, right? Like I'm not big into yeah. gambling. Like we'll avoid that side of Vegas. But, uh, yeah. Oh. Oh, Buzzy, man. Oh. oh, my. Thought we were in yeah. for an early nap there. Oh, there he is. Uh, He's back. That's okay. Yeah, I mean, I know there's lots of other cool stuff there. Uh, I mean, you know, I guess you can always go to the casinos. And, of course, I, I've heard that the buffets have kind of gone down in quality in recent yeah. years. Still a lot of good food options. Date nights will be fun, but outside of that, we're not really going to commingle with the strip or anything. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, for me, Vegas is kind of like New York City. I have no desire to go to either place. Yep. You know, I'm not a gambler, so, you know, Vegas doesn't appeal at all. Yeah, and, I think uh, Vegas for me would be the restaurants, and that's about it. Yeah. 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 I go for that. restaurants and like party aspect where people go there to like celebrate things or yeah. Hey, mm-hmm. weed, weed's legal there now, right? Yep. Weed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh. pr- pretty much everything is legal. In- I'm, a, I'm a truck driver, so it's not legal for me. But... Oh well, it is. Yeah. Uh, there you go. It's not good. Not good for you. <laughs> but the wife will be happy with the uh, gummies and stuff. There you go, yeah. There you go. But Adam, you work for Free to Lay, right? So you're really popular with them. Yeah, right? You could, you could in Vegas, you could jump in a taxi cab with a beer in your mouth. And... I don't know. Are they hiring? I'm looking for a job down there. Yeah. Oh, Free to Lay. You're already happy. You're already, the stoners are happy with you as long as you provide mm-hmm. the chips. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah you know, uh, to your comment there, Mark, I love New York as far as like, I'm one of the few people that love the subway and I love the restaurants and I love the museums and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I just wish it was devoid of humans. So like if there was <laughs> people in the restaurants and museums running that stuff and I was the only person there, New York would be awesome. Um, oh, gotcha. but there's, yeah, you know, I'm not a people person myself either. Yeah. It's the, it's the 5 million people or whatever, whatever it is. Uh, is and a lot of the yeah. worst people yeah. too. Yeah, oh. and you know, and then also all the piss and crap in the streets that also yeah. kind of ruins it. Oh, yeah. that reminds me of uh, New Orleans. Have any of you yeah. heard of the venue called Country Thunder? Country Thunder? No. So basically, it's a venue where they do they do it over Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Sunday. You can camp out, hundred ten bucks. And you just bring your camper in there and get yourself shit face. Man, you can watch all sorts of country bands fucking play shit. Yeah, it moves all over the country. We have it here locally in July. Well, we oh. have it on my way into work. And oh my God, there's there's like, now there's sheriffs everywhere. There's people with their fucking fifth wheels that don't know how to drive. And you're like, oh God, I need to get to work. Get the fuck out of the road. <laughs> uh, and I've been fighting it since Wednesday. So. There you go. Marty loves the Yankees. What a Southern boy that loves the Yankees. That should, that seems like a crime, Marty. But okay. <laughs> well, 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 everybody can be delusional occasionally. So Yankee, go well. home. There you go. Yeah. I You're a school if you don't. Up, I grew up in a household where my mom was a Yankees fan. Yeah, like my this. dad was a Red Sox fan. Call you Shremsky. And they would watch two TVs in fucking two different rooms and fucking scream the TVs. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, and uh, for sure, Bill. Yeah, uh, <laughs> the smell of piss is certainly strong in New York. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I've witnessed many times people peeing, you know, down alleyways. It's just, it's a common occurrence there. Hey, Go, well, mainly because, like, nobody has public restrooms available. So you kind of have to piss down an alleyway. <laughs> Uh, Incidentally, so does every truck stop in America. So I'm used to that. Yeah, there you go. 
<laughs> and, and, and to the to the smell of cabbage, Bill, I would say more accurately, uh, human bo is the other smell that's very prominent Ooh. in New York, especially in the subways. A lot of people not wearing deodorant, apparently. Um, Ooh, dang, dude! If you want, if you want an apartment with a shower, that's like an extra. Twenty five hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> what you wanted plumbing in here? Oh, now you got that. <laughs> did uh, did any of you look at the video that Cheech posted? No, I haven't seen it. No, go look at it. You know, the tornado know, know was was his house. Yeah, they had yeah. a tornado out there, and he actually did a video, an animated video, showing oh, the damage that was caused. Yeah, right that. through his neighborhood, barely missed his house. And, uh, I know he was in a bad accident as well. Um, well, yeah. yeah, and he just didn't need any more excitement in his fucking life. Yeah. And it, it basically went through screen doors, fucking fences, anything that was lightweight that it could hit. Uh, what do you call the paneling on the side of the house? It was taking paneling off the houses. And I was like, holy fuck. Yeah. He don't need, What's he up, Ben? Need, Cheers, buddy. He, hey, does, he doesn't need more. Yeah, Ben uh, made it over to Lexington, and we hung out at the Airbnb we were staying at while we were at the hospital. Very good. Had a good time. Shared some pours. Yeah, Ben's a good we guy. Split, split up, uh, we split up the C-917, and then Ben found – where is it here? Uh, no. Where is – this guy. Ben found this up in New York. We split this as well. Uh, a 120. So, yeah, that completed the, the 20s. Now I have that's, all a, that. that's a high proofer, too. That's like 138. Wow, 136.6. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Still not gotta, not the okay. hottest batch to me. I still think A119 is the hottest of. I was, I was sucking down. That's, the, yeah, that, that's one of the highest proof A batches I've seen. I yeah. was sucking down two 920 and a 3920. My store would have it all the time. And then eventually I got cut off. So I still have two of those bottles in the bar. The 920s, 920s are really good too. Oh, God, they are so Yeah, good. man. I, that's my favorite, actually. Man, yeah. uh, I have an unopened one sitting in the bar. Let's see here. Let's, uh, let's go hazmat since uh, I'm going to do a shorter night tonight. Uh, since oh, work may not. Um, yes, yeah, so this is also courtesy of Ben. This is an Irene tan pick. Um, oh. there you go. And it is, it is hazmat. I mean, just barely, but it is hazmat. What is it? Is it? It's bourbon, right? Uh, yeah, it's a uh, straight bourbon whiskey. Um, let's see here. Hmm. It's out of Colorado. Is it coffee? Uh, it sucker's dark dude. here. It is very dark. Uh, let's see your German copper still. A uh, bunch of buzzwords. Um, yeah, you know, it's, you know it's good if Irene Tan picked it up. Yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. Um, not a ton of information other than it's a single barrel and it's out of Colorado. Uh, nothing about mash bill or anything like that. But yeah, well, Irene Tan's though. got a nose and a, a palate on par with uh, Nancy. Yeah, yep. Right. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm curious to see what she ends up doing with Crowded Barrel. I'm sure that'll be some cool stuff. It's gonna stuff. be good, I think. I, mean, I think she's really gonna add a lot to that. I'm looking mm. forward to it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Cheers, hey, Gordon and, Alice and Mike Brock, you cheers, there, fellas. Yeah. See you guys. Cheers. Cheers. Hey, yeah, no problem, uh, Dwayne. Good to see you, buddy. Good, good night, Dwayne. Night. Hi, Dwayne. <laughs> Hi, bro. Too yep. I'm about to head into the house myself. Been on too long sipping with uh, Bourbon Bounty and uh, Marty and uh, jumped on with y'all just to hang out for just a little bit, but I need uh, to cut out of here pretty soon to get a bite to eat. There yeah. you go. No, no problem, Mark. Yeah. Appreciate you guys popping on. Um, yeah, we're not going to go real late tonight. I'll probably just go another hour or so maybe. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, mainly, mainly just wanted to update everybody that, uh, I didn't get the text or whatever. Um, just kind of, yeah. Tell everybody what was going on, why I didn't make it last Friday and all that. And, and for anybody that missed it, uh, I, cause I'm seeing some new names pop in here. So you don't have to go back and rewatch the beginning. Um, 
you know, short of it is, um, dad went to the hospital last Tuesday and then they moved him up to another hospital because they couldn't uh, take care of his heart issues he was having there. Because, I mean, we, we live in a fairly small town, so our local hospital is not much. Um, and then uh, Wednesday evening of last week, he went into cardiac arrest. They were thankfully able to get him back. And uh, he was on a ventilator for 36 hours till Friday morning. And uh, then they pulled him off that. Thankfully, he recovered. But, you know, he had a bunch of broken ribs and collapsed lungs from all that, you know, chest compressions and stuff. It was uh, fun times. And uh, then, let's see, what was it? It was this last Wednesday that they put in the pacemaker and uh, defibrillator to uh, keep his heart, you know, doing the right stuff. So. And so he's he's uh he's up in Somerset now, the kind of the next town over with my my sister's place, uh, recovering, and uh, they're watching over him because my sister she doesn't work well she works but really my brother in law works and my sister just kind of helps so she can how, uh, watch how, him. How old is he? My dad seventy just turned seventy in February. So I was forty nine and I got a quadruple bypass. Okay, well, I think yeah. tomorrow would have, been, would have been my dad's 80th birthday. Hey, hey, well, I, and uh, do they? Yeah, you, you're 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 in a coma for three days. They don't they don't want you fucking moving. You're laying flat on the bed. They got tubes going everywhere now. Yeah, I'm sure. And that, yeah. that that's that's the shit kind of scares people. And I talked to my girl. My girl's a uh, she's a retired nurse, and she fucking has told me. You tell all your friends where does a battle wound because you don't know fucking well, you know you don't know what's going to go on you know that was uh, 2015 that happened oh damn so, and I know what caused it you know too much good barbecue <laughs> it'll do it <laughs> it'll fuck you up well it's 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 the it's the heavy carbs with the barbecue that's what gets you uh, uh, and it's not the <laughs> drinking it's always the fucking barbecue. <laughs> and uh marty appreciate that brother yeah it was uh it was an intense week for sure well i mean you know so when it, it's funny because uh i don't know nothing nothing is like the movies at all you know um like i remember we were, we were we were just in the room talking and then all of a sudden like uh the ekg machine like it goes because he was like steady around 170 which is already crazy high heart rate yeah um and they just weren't able to get it down. And then it like shot up to like 273. Oh my God. Damn. And then just dropped to zero. And then he, he just goes, I remember he's just like, whoa. And then he was out. Yeah. Scary. Yeah. Yep. Scary yeah. shit. Yeah. And then, you know, I, I didn't leave the room. I, I watched him do the whole thing. And uh, again, not like the movies. Like it's, you know, in the movies, like they're, it's always very, coordinated in real life it's chaos <laughs> yeah yeah because uh, yeah, you know that's we humans we, we never react well in panicky situations so even people that do this every day you're never expecting someone to die on you so it's like you know um yeah it was uh it was intense yeah especially there in the hospital like they think they got them stabilized and then some shit happens and they're just like oh damn yeah. yeah. Was it like that that thing where like it goes across the like all the pagers or there's like the flashing light and everybody comes running? Oh yeah. Uh, so like I mean as soon as I saw it jump to two seventy three, I, I already was standing up. I got out of the chair and then I was looking at him and then he did that and then he fainted. And so I was already walking out of the room to get their attention. They were already coming in. They were already coming in the room at that point so i mean they were in the room in like 10 seconds yeah yeah like the, and like the whole staff like more people than we had seen all night like there had to been 15 people in the room well, um, well, well two, 200 level is stroke and i without getting a fucking prius shit that i can't talk about i'll tell you this much that i've sat there and watched one guy that went to 273 that had a dnr on and the doctor was looking at him like you want me to resuscitate him? He doesn't want me to do shit to him. And the guy's sitting there going, yeah, no, no, I want to live, I want to live, I want to live. 
So they, they'll get to that fucking point. You never fucking know. And my shit that happened was I actually had the pain going down my finger. And my girl and her sisters were in fucking town. And I could feel it. I amped my caffeine up to a oh my god level. And it started to fuck me up. And I was like clogged. <laughs> and I don't know if you guys know what a cath lab is. Yeah. I, I, you know what a cath lab is? Mm-hmm. You know what? Uh, we we learned a lot of terms over the last week, so. <laughs> so I I watched I watched a lot of guys over the years, and I've taken a lot of hospitals, a lot of things. Did a cath lab on me, and they told me I was eighty percent blocked. And I was laying in a uh, <laughs> a surgery room, and I had a surgeon in there along with a a cardiologist. And he goes, "Hey, you're eighty percent blocked." He goes, "We're gonna have to fucking do a surgery on you." I'm like, hey, "What happens if I?" Don't want to do the surgery. I mean, you know what the fucking heart surgeon tells me? He goes, "You die." Yep. <laughs> yeah. It's real simple. It's I'm like, okay, well, like, go do the surgery. Thing is, I woke up, and and the thing that fucking kind of scared me a little bit was they put the intubation tube down your fucking throat, and I've watched it done to several dudes over the years. You choke on that motherfucker, and mm-hmm. my girl, being the nurse that she is, I can hear her sexy ass voice. And she's like, don't pull on it so hard, it's going to choke on it. And I started open my eyes after my third day in a coma. And uh, I could see her. And that tube just popped out of my mouth. Oh, no. I looked at her, I was like, oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> love you, baby. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's, that's my, that's my fucking story. All right, Mark. Good to see you tonight, Mark. Mark. Hey, hey, cheers. Mark. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to your old man. His birthday's tomorrow, or his birthday would have been tomorrow. So yeah, you know, I mean, honestly, in the woods too. Cheers to everyone that's lost their father. That's a a rough thing. Yeah, he was a good man, and I learned quite a lot from him. So I'm appreciative. We know, we know by hanging out with you, Mark, that he was a good man. So yeah, Yeah, for sure. (laughs) Love you, buddy. Cheers, bud. Yeah, my dad had a heart attack back in 2000, and I was the only family member that lived three hours away, so I was at work while he went through a quintuple bypass, which really sucks. So then you get a call at work. I work graveyard shift at like four in the morning, like, okay, he's through surgery. He's okay. And I'm like literally broke down in tears at work. I was was literally just a freaking wreck. That's rough, dude. Yeah, it's not the news you want. That's for sure. So my ex had to drive us up there the next morning after I got off work. But yeah, luckily he pulled through. Yeah. And he's 82 right now. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, I was kind of uninformed about pacemakers and all this kind of stuff um, <clears throat> before this week and uh, didn't really know what to think about them. So, you know, we asked a lot of questions and did some research and stuff. You know, and then we start asking friends and stuff, their thoughts and people that have been through this. And, uh, you know, a lot of folks live 15, 20, 30 years on pacemakers. So they're really not that big a deal. And uh, they do a great thing, which is keep your heart in rhythm, which is, you know, <laughs> was that's whole issue. No, yeah. yeah, I mean, so what what caused the cardiac arrest is he had ventricular fibrillation, which is where the lower section of your heart which is the big muscles that's what really does all the pumping when those start freaking out then your heart doesn't work right so you can have afib which is the top section and that's a problem but it's not as nearly as serious but when the bottom section starts freaking out then then you have real problems and that's what happened uh, didn't schwarzenegger just get a pacemaker oh did he i think so i think that was in the news recently or maybe i'm remembering and it wasn't that but i could have swore that's what it was yeah 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 they're they're not uh they're not that big a deal these days and then like surgery was like 15 minutes like it was so quick yeah they had him in and out and he, he still says he barely even feels it so it's a very small incision uh cheer sean just rewatched the beginning of the show and praying for you and your oh thank you man appreciate that uh, cheers, todd. Cheers, cheers todd appreciate you buddy yeah, that's that's why I wasn't on uh, two ten ninety Tuesday because uh, I was in Lexington in the hospital. But uh, oh well, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cheers, Todd. Good to see you, man. Uh, 
see here been quite some time since my dad passed but i am surrounded by his pictures in the bar and his world war ii korea medals that's awesome man all right cheers, cheers, cheers that, that you're right yeah cheers buddy uh my grandma had a pacemaker put in her in mid 80s and lived to 98 there you go yeah freaking sweet yeah yeah so uh, they, they they do a great thing for sure <laughs> I mean, cheers to your dad, Peter. People saw enough in World War II, but he saw Korea too. Yeah, yeah, wow. man, that's a tough guy. Right there. <clears throat> that's a lot of shit, right there. Yeah, man, mm-hmm. Jesus. So, in 1944, my mom and dad were in a movie theater. My dad was in the Air Force, and they came out of the movie theater, and they were dropping. Newspapers on the fucking ground that said Pearl Harbor had been attacked. Dang. And that's, that's what my dad knew was he was going to go to World War II. Yeah. I'd say there's a lot of fellows like that. Yeah. That was rough yeah. to hear. Yeah, yeah. My dad was born like three months before Pearl Harbor. Right. Well, <laughs> and then when my dad go to re enlist, it was in 64. At the start of Vietnam, and he was in communications, and they wanted to stick him on a hill in a convention tower. And guess what he did? He retired. Done. I'm going. Yeah. Yeah, as, as, as Wood said, cheers to all the dads, man. With yeah. us are gone. Yeah. Sure, man. Yeah. That's, that's, where happy that. that's where you should have learned 80 to 90% of your <laughs> life. Oh, yeah, for sure, man. Yeah, you know, early in life, me and dad had an interesting relationship, but it's it's gotten better over time for sure. Oh, well, I mean, I, in fairness, I was an idiot, so, <laughs> um, uh, you know. Yeah, we know, we know. <laughs> yeah, still, I mean, still am. We've heard, we've heard, we've heard the stories. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You think I'm an idiot now? You should have known me back then. Uh, uh yeah. <laughs> I'm actually fairly intelligent comparatively. Um, anyway, 69, there you go. May 3rd. Yeah, fishing old cars and bourbon, for sure. It certainly is. It certainly is better to burn out than the rust. Yeah. Enjoy life. Yeah. Enjoy yeah. well, you got it. Carl, cheers. Good to see you, buddy. What's up, man? Two of my favorite things. I live in the sticks up here, fishing and bourbon. Man, man, Peter, why your dad went through the shit, man? Jesus, oh, yeah. <laughs> I bet your dad was tough as nails. <laughs> yeah, that guy has seen some stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's uh, that's like maybe the worst era of human history here in America. Got to be up there for sure. <sighs> Uh, I listen to the people that came back from Vietnam. Yeah. Um, my dad got his private pilot's license when I was about seven or eight. And a family friend that ran the airport that taught him. He's in his mid-90s right now. But he threw, he flew medic choppers in Vietnam behind the lines to pick guys up. Yeah, that's that's not the job There's you want. stories when you're a kid that kind of scare you. When you see that stuff. Yeah, guys blown up and hit with napalm and all kinds of terrible shit. Then, yeah. Oh, well, and what I don't get is people want to hear this shit. I mean, why is it any of your fucking business? Because I got a buddy of mine, so uh, Iraqi veteran, 10 years army. And uh, he was telling me when he came out of the fucking airport here in Arizona. When they when you're in the Hummer, they want you to look at a fucking roof to look for insurgents. He goes, I was driving the car with the wife, and he goes, I was looking up. I'm like, why? He goes, guys, it didn't leave me yet. No, I have friends that came back from over there, and years and years, it's still with them. Yeah, and he he made the comment. I won't get into detail, but he also fucking said that people. Wanted to know what happened to all the bodies that were out there. So he gave in and kept detail, and I'm like, I don't fucking need to hear that shit, dude. Yeah. Yeah. 
<clears throat> yeah, well, you know, I guess uh, just in life experience, uh, everybody like has to deal with things different. I find, you know, well, some people got to talk about it. Some people can keep it in and just be quiet about it, and they're good with that. But uh, you know, I think if you if you need to talk about it, then you probably should, or else you know, you know, like hanging yourself or something. Uh, yeah, that's so. Yep, yep, that's why there's so many vets helplines now. Mm-hmm. I mean, give them as much help as they need. They deserve it. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. I worked for uh, Oshkosh Defense, one of the bigger military contractors for a few years building trucks. And there were guys that came back from Afghanistan, and one guy said he was sitting in the passenger seat, and a sniper bullet hit the front windshield, but it was bulletproof glass, so it didn't get him. And he was so thankful. Yeah, I'd say. They came, they came and toured the assembly line. We were building the trucks. And... Well, do you guys remember the, the video? Uh, well, actually, the movie Black Hawk Down. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. There's actually a video on YouTube that somebody had fucking share with me. And it was from one of the vets that actually was sitting in that fucking helicopter. So. What's up, Gordo? Fucking, Here's the Hey, Gordo. Somebody. They're they're talking about the shit that fucking rode through the helicopter, and uh, I didn't really think shit about the video. It's like, yeah, it's just a military vet, just like somebody's experience, and he's getting shot at, and he, you know, he told who he lost and this and that, and uh, he's standing up in his fucking garage. There you go. Yeah, that here is yeah. that feels right. Yeah. Well, when he when he stood up in his fucking garage, he, he had no fucking legs. And I was like, "What the fuck is this shit?" Yeah, and there's so many guys like that, you know. So. And then, then you know, I feel like what's even worse, you know, besides <sighs> not having all your limbs, is just like the trauma of all that, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, and that, that was a comment he made was the it, it, he felt bad because uh, all, all of his guys they lost their lives and he was still alive. And I yeah. never, ever, ever fucking heard of that. Yeah, I mean that's what I mean. See, is like you know, in a lot of those situations, you know, maybe you lost a limb or two, but you also had to see your buddies get completely blown apart. You know, Certainly. so mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, that's true life at war, man. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like real life Lieutenant Dan. Yeah. Yeah, man. Probably one of the best movies of all fucking time, man. <laughs> Just telling you. Huh? Full, Full Metal Jagged. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah standing one. on a hill with a case of Budweiser screaming, I love the smell of napalm in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, Apocalypse uh, Now, that's one of my favorites. Apocalypse Now, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually mentioned this on another stream, but is anybody, uh, it's newer, but has anybody seen it? What is it? It's all quiet on the Western Front. No. Um, I haven't seen that one yet. Yeah, it's, uh, I one it's yet. good. I mean, it's massively depressing, but that's exactly the kind of movie I love. Oh, more, more than that happy, brother. I mean, it's just it's just war in kind of its raw form, you know. You're, you're, you're basically just following around one guy the whole movie and just kind of through his perspective. But, you know, it's a, it's a fucking mess because it's World War II and, you know, and trench warfare and guys just, you know, close quarters combat, just stabbing each other to death. And it's, it's brutal, man. Yeah. Um, have you seen They Shall Not Grow Old? No. That's World War One, and it's basically people's diaries, and they just read their diaries through the movie and reenact mm. the battles, and it's some nasty shit. Oh, the trench warfare and the mustard gas, and yeah, yeah, yeah. It was rough times. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not all Hogan's heroes. <laughs> no, in fact, no. none of it is. <laughs> no. And that was such a None good of it's that. Calm, so much fucking fun to watch. But I'm like, nah. Yeah. I didn't watch that much when I was a kid. I did watch Black Sheep Squatter and that. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. That was, a good, that. that was a good show. Yes, sir. Yeah, 1918 that's was good. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. yeah the planes. Uh, mm. 
<laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, Bowery. Yeah, yeah. If, uh, if you want to be like deeply depressed, just watch. <laughs> watch. It's all quiet <laughs> on the Western Front. Yeah. It'll like it'll ruin your day. Um. <laughs> uh, yeah. See, World War One. I, I watched uh, Kelly's Heroes a lot when I was a kid. That sounds familiar. It's an old. Point Eastwood, Don Rickles, Telly Savalas. World War II, yep. 1970 film. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, has anyone watched The Longest Day? Oh, Clint Eastwood. Mm -hmm. uh, Longest Day, I think, was early 60s. It was. John Wayne, Robert Mitch, and a whole bunch of other people, and it was basically uh, D Day. Mm. That is a very good movie. Hey, Jerry Black, what's up, buddy? Hey, Jerry. 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 Yeah, you know, uh, I don't know, it's kind of become <clears throat> like a meme almost in some regards, but. Uh, Saving Private Ryan, like the opening scenes of that movie are yeah. also some of the most brutal ever put on film. Just yeah, yeah. yeah. Storm on that beach, man. Need that shit though. Yeah. Like that Pearl Harbor one. It's kind of a disservice to the the fight, actually. Yeah. Like I don't. Like it. What it needs the, like that kind of shit needs to be gritty and turn your stomach, not be like, mm -hmm. oh, they bombed us. Now we're gonna go get them. <laughs> what, what, what was what, what was the movie where the guy was at the bottom of the hill and all his fucking his, his guys are getting killed at the top of the hill and he's bringing the them down one by one. So like Hamburger Hill is that the one? I know. With the kid that played uh he played uh Spider Man. Or some shit, right? No, 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 no. No, no it wasn't Spider. It wasn't Spider. Was it was an old movie. movie? Yes, a military movie. Oh, I don't know. I was thinking of the, the newer one that was about that medic it. kid. Yes, medic. He, he was in the Pacific. He was a medic. He would not pick up a gun. Yeah. But he saved, like, his whole goddamn platoon and even, like, some Japanese guys. Yes. <laughs> mm. What was up. the name of that movie? Yeah, go look it up. That that fucking movie I saw in the movie theater, dude, it, it, it had me on the floor. I was like, what the fuck is going on here? Another classic, uh, Bridge Over the River Kwai. That's, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's yeah. great. Yeah, Hacksaw Ridge, that's another good one. Oh, that's it, right there. Hacksaw Ridge, yep. that was it. Right on, brother. <clears throat> Here's the... um, if you ever get yeah, a chance... Got... That, that's a movie that everybody should fucking go take a look at. If you've got time yeah, to spend hours, Ken Burns either the war or the Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those are really good. Yeah, those were on uh, PBS for a while. Mm -hmm. They're still yeah. on demand on PBS, too. Yeah, okay. And yeah, to your point, Carl, this is true. Yeah, we can't... Basically, we can't have good movies anymore. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we can't, we can't hurt the terrorists. But and the terrorists have too. Right, okay. Appreciate you popping on, man. Yeah, just wanted to hop on, have a drink with you boys, and cheers, Adam. Take care. Shout out to your good dad, time. dude. I hope, hope care, everything man. goes good. Yeah, appreciate Bye, that, buddy. Brother. Cheers, man. Good to see you. Yeah, take care, care. Yourself, brother. See you guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I'm going to join you in a beer, see. Uh, kind of wind down because I do have to work tomorrow. So yeah. rather than continue with uh, cast drink whiskey, I should probably. <laughs> yeah, it, it can be a problem. Yeah. That's why I drink beer. I sip it with the whiskey and I keep it kind of low level. I don't, I don't know. Sure. Empty. I finished off my Coors Light Sunday night side of your beer. Uh, Jigs is asking if your handy arrived, Z. Yes. Okay, cool. And the cool. Uh, JTS Brown is going to get open with you on stream. One. The nice. Um, that that cool. was very generous of you, brother. I appreciate it. I got the other one sitting here. This is the 80 proof, though. 
No, he gave me give me two fucking bottles, man. The bib is really good. I'm like, holy fucking shit. I, I, I didn't I saw the label and I didn't know who the fuck it was. But Oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, dear, yeah. Well, he, he's back. back. Oh man. Z is self editing or something. My yeah. freshman year at Madison, the fall of ninety one. We had a Marine that came back from Iraq, and that dude was all degrees of messed up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you That's know, it's kind of it's kind of crappy because I feel like like vets from these later wars, Desert Storm, and uh, the the War on Terror, all, all those kind of things. Like they didn't get the praise that you know the fellows from one and two and Vietnam and all that. Like they just uh, feels like they kind of get left behind, which is really sad because they fought just as hard, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Still I just feel bad that we send them over there, but we don't take care of them when they come back. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's yeah. It's totally shitty. Yeah. It's <laughs> one of the many reasons. Anyway, I'm not gonna I'll go get on a rant over there, but yeah, no, you can take care of rant about our government because I do. Yeah. I don't. Want to <laughs> uh, don't get me started, John. Okay. <laughs> Uh, freaking assholes in DC. Anyway, um, buddy, what you doing? Yeah. Also, I was away from my guy here for like a week. Hey, buddy, hey, buddy, come on, up, 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 up. You gotta try harder than that. Come on, come on. There we go. There we go. Yeah, yeah Peter. I was gonna say like, yeah. Vietnam was, they've had to fight for the respect they have now, which is sad. Which I understood people protesting the war, but you don't give shit to the soldiers when they come back. No, yeah, same, thing, same thing with like Iraq and Iraq. Yeah, you again. stand behind the soldiers like, while they're over there. Yeah. Definitely stood behind them, but yeah. Part yeah. Of the reason I if didn't want... want to go in the army is because I knew I was going to go play in the fucking sandbox and I did not want to go do that. Well, see, I graduated in 91, and like fall of 90, I'm like thinking, okay, I got accepted to Madison for engineering, or do I want to go in the Air Force? And I thought about it as soon as we invaded Kuwait, I'm like, well, that answers that question. Hey, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm one of my friends. I'm going to college. MS from probably the burning pits <laughs> over in fucking Iraq. Yeah. Dealing with that for years. Yeah. And sorry to hear that, Jerry. That that sucks, man. Hopefully, yeah, we're you, praying for you, man. I hope you don't. But yeah, hopefully you get some positive results here in a few weeks. Mm-hmm. Or not positive, I guess. Negative. Whatever. I, whatever the thing is. Whatever. Well, whatever. Positive for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not bad results. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Buddy. Let me go, boy. Yeah, let me grab a beer. I need to, I need to continue yeah. drinking something. <laughs> so what's nope. Ben doing then? Driving? Yeah, Ben, uh, I don't know where he is right now. Uh, somewhere between... So he was heading... I don't even know where he headed after me. So see, that was uh, that was Wednesday, kind of mid-afternoon. And he hung out with me. I was in Lexington. And he was undecided then where he was headed. So I don't know if he went up to back up to Ohio or... Where he's at, but he, he was in chat on Whiskey Friends last night, and he was at Bobby Bourbon Italians. Okay, yeah, he talked about that, and so uh, I figure that's probably where he went. But yeah, so may I, I imagine he's he can't be still there. I don't know where he is now, but somewhere between there and New York, I imagine. <laughs> Yeah. Ben's living the dream. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah he just travels yeah. around for a couple of weeks and hangs out with awesome people and drinks lots of whiskey. I think he just needs to, at some point, just change, have plates in the car from Indiana to Ohio. You know, just yeah. change the plates on the car. Yeah. Yeah, he, he wasn't driving his car. He actually did a rental this time, which was surprising. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. I thought he was driving his car. Um, Oh, there you go. Subaru yeah. anymore? <laughs> no, he, he did. He did not uh, take the uh, lovingly, affectionately called the the Jubaru. Uh, he, he was not. 
<laughs> he was not driving that. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, I, I was surprised as well. That was my first question. I was like, hey, where is it? He's like, nah, not this trip. So I had to give it a break. Um, yeah, Mark, but, all everybody, yeah, you guys deserve all the help you can get. Yeah, man. Yeah, you know, so shitty, man. Like, it's just, mm-hmm. you, you do one of the hardest things that you can do in this life, and then nobody helps you afterwards. Yeah, it's uh, freaking bullshit. Yep. Anyway, I'm gonna, <laughs> like I said, I'm gonna try and not shit on the government tonight. Not, <laughs> not, not too much. Anyway. Uh, can't not do it. But <laughs> <laughs> the urge. We went backstage Sunday night after. Uh, Livewire and Del Lawrence and I were the only two left. And yeah, we were talking about politics here, politics up there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Luckily, it was only him and I backstage. So yeah, it was it was quite the interesting conversation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I think yeah, you know, I've, I've talked with most of you guys already. I think most of you already know, but like, uh, it, you know, I, I don't care either way. Like, if you yeah. however you vote, I could give a shit. Uh, I think it's all yeah. the same bull crap. So. It doesn't even matter to me. I think they're all they all have the same boss, so it's it's like whatever. Um, I mean, my personal thought is hang them all and uh, start over, and then if that batch does acts up, hang them too, and just keep going until people act right. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, but that's you know frowned upon, so you, you're not supposed to say that. <laughs> yeah. But you know, uh, it, is, it is we the people, not DC. But you know, we kind of forgot somewhere along the way, but. Yeah. Anyway, uh, although it never really has been, they've always had the power, but that's just uh, the nature of the beast, I suppose. Or the people that are bankrolling them have the power. Yeah. yeah. Where in the hell have you been? <laughs> oh, really? Hey, no problem, Jimmy. Yeah, so I'll do a quick <laughs> summation again, because I know uh, West Coast folks I see just popping in here as well. So, uh, yeah, so short of it is, last Tuesday... Um, Okay, well, we also got Jonathan popping in. What's up, buddy? Hey. Yeah, this, this, is, this is the uh, hey. the update you know, I was talking about, Jonathan. Uh, finally getting around to it. Um, yeah, so last Tuesday, uh, well, I guess back up a little bit. Dad's been having heart issues for a while. Um, they did an ablation six weeks ago, uh, and that did not go well. Uh, he had all kinds of problems after that, uh, a lot of swelling, like gained like 30 pounds in water, which is very hard on your body, like in his tissue, not in his blood. So he, w- so he was like technically dehydrated, even though he was holding all this water. Um, and then, uh, dizziness, nausea, headaches, um, just like falling asleep randomly. In fact, he didn't tell me this till we were in the hospital, but that Tuesday he drove into town to see just check on me to see how work was going which he shouldn't have done and on the way home he like fell asleep and almost drove off the road mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like what the hell dad what, what, stay home like what are you doing um, but anyway uh, so I mean things were not going well so then Tuesday evening we check in the hospital here our local hospital which isn't much and they couldn't really do a whole lot for him because it is a small hospital so then they sent him up to Somerset, which is the next town over. And then we were there for uh, two days, basically. And then uh, Wednesday night uh, in Somerset, he, uh, Dad went into cardiac arrest. Um, and then thankfully, because we were already in ICU and all that, they got in there very quickly, got him back, um, and you know did the whole chest compressions and defibrillator thing and all that. And it was intense. And we, we were all in the room when it happened. Cause like, we were just, we were talking like literally as it happened. But, um, <clears throat> anyway, um, so then after that, they had to put him on a ventilator, uh, cause you know, all the damage to your lungs and everything from the chest compressions. Cause they, they did chest compressions for about three or four minutes. I mean, it's hard to t- tell cause like time kind of goes weird and things are happening, sure. uh, but something like that. Um, and so he has a bunch of broken ribs now and he had, uh, Oh, he was checking out. Sorry. Sorry. Z. uh, <clears throat> but anyway, um, yeah, broken ribs, uh, 
collapsed lungs, so he was on a vent for a while. They took him off that Friday morning, I want to say, and he responded well. He was fine. That's that's like that was probably the the second most intense moment is when they pulled him off a vent because you know you don't know who's coming back. Like you don't know if he has brain damage. You have no idea. Um, so when he woke up and everything was fine, that was a huge relief. And that was Friday morning, so they didn't really do much over the weekend, just kind of kept him stable. And then uh, it was this last Wednesday that they put in the pacemaker slash defibrillator and, uh, you know, that'll keep his heart rate. Because all this happened because he had AFib and uh, ventricular fibrillation, which is basically AFib in the lower section of your heart, which is just irregular rhythms in your, your lower part of your heart. That's what caused the cardiac arrest. So. So now he's home. We, we came back late uh, last night. He's at my sister's up in Somerset. Uh, she's able to watch him more than I can because me and my wife both work full time. So she's hanging with him. And plus they have the adjustable beds because right now he can't lay flat. Like that's really hard on his ribs and yeah. like breathing is hard when he's laying down flat. So they got all that set up. And so he's doing good. He got a full night's rest last night for the first time in like a week. So he was happy about that. And he's... Uh, He's doing as good as he can be basically. So, um, yeah, so so it'll be a few months of recovery, but he should be good. We're, we're open. So they, um, so there was, was there, there was an open heart procedure or was this just from all the compressions? No. So the collapsed lung and broken ribs was just, uh, from the chest compressions, just, uh, just get the heart going again. Yeah. Um, yeah, and as far as like surgeries, it was just the, which is, I mean, it's barely a surgery. They, just, they make a very small incision right under your clavicle here, and they yeah. just go down through a vein, basically your carotid. They just go down through that um, and put electrical leads on your heart, and like that sends the signal when your heart doesn't to keep it in the right rhythm. Um, so, yeah, he's, and like we could see it on the EKG after that, but, like the, the following day, like you, you could see where it was kicking in and doing its thing. Crazy. Uh, so yeah, you're glad it's not the 1980s, right? Yeah, for sure, man. And also glad he wasn't at home because I mean, if he was home, yeah, yeah. Was it. who knows? Yeah. yeah, I don't know how My far you went from medical best. services and stuff like that. You know, you know, you, it's crazy to think. You know, every second. You know, oh yeah, I mean, so like if even if mom had say say they were home and mom called uh, 911 immediately. It's 20 minutes out from the hospital easily. Jesus. And there's just no way, you know, because we were talking to the doctor afterwards and he said, once you get past like the 20 and especially 30 minute mark without oxygen to the brain, there's usually not much they can do. I mean, they can get you back alive technically, but your brain has just been damaged so much that you're not really there anymore. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, thankfully he was there in the hospital, in the ICU. They were in in like 10 seconds and immediately got to work and had him back in seven minutes. And, you know, even that said, even in that seven minutes, they're doing chest compression. So there's still some blood moving. Sure. Um, you know, they're doing the little ball thing, pumping air in your lungs and stuff. So, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was intense. So how are you feeling? <laughs> Yikes. Uh, it's hard to say, you know. <laughs> um, you're, not, you're numb, you know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, better now. Uh, cause you know, I mean, he's basically stable and things are good ish. Um, but yeah, man, Wednesday and Thursday and really Friday when we were waiting for him to come off the ventilator was, it was tough. Yeah. It was not fun. Yeah. So yeah, I can't, I can't, um, I don't want to say I can't imagine I can. It's just, uh, you know, how old's your dad? Uh, I just turned 70 in February. All right. So he's got a long way to go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, thankfully, you know, we didn't know a ton about pacemakers before this cause it didn't have any need to. Um, but I mean, basically technology has come a long way. Like it, he, it's like there's Bluetooth in it. So it goes right to his phone so he can like have live updates, what his heart's doing and stuff. So make sure he doesn't get hacked. You know what I mean? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to make sure I'm trying. It's bad. That's okay. I, I, I cope with saying things the same way, John. It's yeah. fine. All right. yeah. um, the technology these days in the surgery and stuff is freaking amazing. Oh, yeah. To like 
I said my dad when I was a kid, he had quadruple heart surgery where they or bypass where they basically crack your ribs open, spread you wide open, disconnect your heart, hook hook your bloodstream up to some machine that pumps it around and then they took oh god, it was ridiculous. He had scars all all the way down his leg and you know, of course his whole chest. Uh -huh. And now it's like, oh no, they just do like a little zip here and you're good to go. Or Cordo, I thought you were describing like a, a, an episode of MASH there for a second. That sounds, you know, like I, just going back, it's crazy to think that that's what they had to do to save somebody. Yeah, that yeah. was in that was a kindergarten. That was 88. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Cordo, my dad had a quintuple in 2000. He still got that zipper scar. Oh. Zipper scar and then the whole, they, his leg was split wide open too because they took mm -hmm. a couple of like the major veins out of his leg to rebuild yeah. stuff around his heart. Well, to try to change the subject, if you ever want to know why I'm so stupid, they definitely had to put the paddles to me once in my life. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. All right. Yeah. Uh, that was wild. That was after a car accident. But, um, you know, I don't think it was a, I think it was a big deal, but like there was no, you know, chest compressions outside of, you know, a handful. I had some bruises. That was about it. You know, yeah. Um, I was, I was fortunate. So, uh, but I didn't get to see it. So, <laughs> yeah. I well, yeah, that's, that's the thing. I don't know if I want it's to see it. Yeah. Hey, Tony. Well, you know, it's it's funny you say that, John, because Dad does not remember any of him being on the ventilator. He doesn't remember going out. It, like he he woke up Friday morning in Lexington and had no idea where he was, what happened. Jesus, nothing, you know. So, wow. yeah. When I woke up, they kind of gave me like all the play by play of what happened. You know, just everything just went white. You know, just didn't know, and you know, just that was it. You know. Yeah. So it's uh. You know, the fact that you all saw what was going on is, is scary and a blessing because you were all all there, you know, with no matter what the outcome was, you were there, you know. Yeah, you know, like uh, a few of our friends and stuff were, were saying like, man, that must have been rough. But at the same time, like I wouldn't have wanted to be either anywhere else. So it's like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So like I said, I was three hours away when my dad had his heart attack. I could not imagine not being there. Yeah. And uh, officially, cheers, Jody. What's up, buddy? Good to see you, man. Hey, Jody. Jody. Um, and thank and thank you, everybody, and on panel and in chat, uh, all the kind words and prayers, and yeah, man. Uh, thanks for all the support. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a rough week. So you saw Ben this week, right? Yeah, yeah. Me and Ben got to hang out. He he stopped by Lexington. We, uh, my brother-in-law, got an Airbnb for all of us because he was he was still back home in Somerset. And so we were kind of in the midst of all the shit. So he kind of took care of all the arrangements and stuff. Um, and yeah, so Ben and me, well, here he is. Here's Ben. Yep. We hung out at the Airbnb for a little bit and had some pours. And Ben, you're going to need a wide angle lens with that hair right there, buddy. Oh, look at look at these fine looking fellows on the couch there. Yeah. What's up, Jeff? Hey, Darrell. Well, uh -oh. somebody in the chat let me know I was muted. I'm sorry. I was uh, switching uh, mics, so I'm here now. But, uh, yeah, I, I was joining late. Sorry about uh, the catastrophes or whatever, but um, he hello. Cheers. Yeah, for sure, Jody. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate it, man. Um, yeah, it was uh, it was a hell of a week. Uh, <laughs> One sure I hope that sounds so there we go. What what do you got there, John? Let's see. Uh, look at the solo going here. Nine one eight. Heck yeah, man. She's almost gone too. Yeah. yeah. This one Let's and nine one nine are my two favorites. Yeah. Well, That's we had been, we had been for a second there. <laughs> he's having too much fun. He needs some fun. Yeah, he, he's hanging out, hanging out with some some good fellows there. So. Yeah. Ben, ben, Ben's been there for everyone else. Hopefully Ben gets to be there for himself, you know? Yeah, for sure, man. Oh, we, we've renamed it. Maybe that'll help. Oh, boy. What is up, fellas? Good to see you guys. This is so much fun. This is too much crotch, man. Bouncing. Yeah. Oh, here we go. We got, got some other guys hanging out here. 
Next camera is a little low. I can't make out anything they're saying. I'm going to mute them because they're not even talking. Yeah, raise the camera up, guys. Come on. Yeah, too much crotch. All we got is crotch shots and background noise. Um. Anyway, diminishing returns right there. Yeah, but good to see you guys. If you can hear us, they probably can't even hear us. I, I mean, I think Jeff is swimming in in alcohol right now. It it, it looks that way. Ha- having hung out with Jeff and had many pours together, it looks like he's having a pretty good time. <laughs> and there's Darrell. Okay, let me unmute. He's gonna, he's gonna unmute it. It looks like Darrell's uh, gonna come. Let less crotch. What, what what's up, guys? How we doing? Hand down, hand down. No, there's they're still not talking about My laptop's out Can you hear them in here? No, we just need one of you to speak at once. The internet is watching. Yeah, there you go. How are we doing, guy? Seems happy. That's what we're trying to I guess Ben made it to. I don't know how much of this is going on. Uh, yeah man uh jimmy yeah i mean you know well hi everybody if you can hear us yes hope you're having a good day i it's 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 better now than it was for sure yeah hopefully the the bad days are behind us for a little while anyway as soon as you watch it <laughs> we, we, we still have wings and crutch. I mean, that's all we have. I still can't. I'm going to remute them because I can't make out anything they're saying. Um, <laughs> the internet kicked them out. Yeah, for sure. Um, dong for the for days. Yes, indeed. Uh, <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, and Jeff on blending old number seven. <laughs> like last night when they're doing the blends. Yeah, yeah. That's why I, I joked. I said whoever finishes fourth has got a bottle check number seven. Hey man, I had I had your back there. I was like, hey, it's Jay's turn, and then they, I don't think they ever got around to it. So you got off early. You all should go to the strip club. There you go. I will say uh, this one. Hold on, hold on. Time. Adam's bringing the strip club to Ben. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I guess they're changing something. Oh, here we go. They need to lift the camera up and aim it down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We we appreciate the, we the new. I'll see if it would work better. I'll see if it would work better from here, and it's not really happening. You guys need internet. Well. I feel, I feel like we can't do the echo. We yeah, got like the new going on. Yeah, we just don't get good volume from here, unfortunately. Sorry, you just have a really good phone. It's okay. Wait, it's, uh, it's good to see you guys. I don't know if you can hear us, but that's that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. You have an Apple? Can you can you hear? Yeah. Sorry, we'll back out until we can figure it out, guys. Sorry. <laughs> All right, no problem, guys. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go grab a beer real quick. Oh, you said grab a beer. I thought you said grow a beer. That was like, man, that was quick. I'm like, I can't do that. You know, like, I don't feel like I'm part of this you because I can't grow a beard. It, it will take me like six months. It's sad. Yeah, he can do it in like two um, minutes. Jonathan, I'm 50 and I still can't grow a beard side. I think I'm just sweet or something. That's the problem. But. There you go. There you go. Um, you know, I, I kind of, I'm at the point now in my day where, you know, I had some issues today and I took a nice long nap, made dinner, and now I'm ready to stay up all night. So this is like, you know, reverse cycling myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not great. I took I a nap after work and I didn't, I woke up for Jody's stream after seven o'clock my time. Oh, I may not be up that long. I don't know. I, I, I still have to take naps when, uh, like, I'm still not 100%. And for some reason, today was a <laughs> like a meltdown kind of day. So um, I don't like taking naps. I think, you know, I'll sleep at the end of my life. But unfortunately, that's kind of what happens with this. So. Yeah. 
to with you, Jonathan. I, I try to avoid naps at all costs, mainly because it ruins my sleep at night, and I already have enough problems sleeping at night. So yeah, I try to avoid them, but sometimes. Okay, Bowler, there you go. That's. Oh. I'll okay, just so I'll be. I just don't. Hey, so I'm gonna. What's up, Mike? <laughs> I'm gonna mute and go piss. And off and see Daddy, like uh. <laughs> like, uh, hey Jonathan, I think we have a deal there with Bauer. <laughs> He'll treat us. We can trade him whiskey. He'll give us beer. Drinks. Okay. <laughs> what? I don't, I don't even know, know what this means. Tell beer. you what part of the what part of his body the hair came from. But yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um. Hey. Uh. Yeah. Cheers, buddy. Good to see you tonight, Mark. Yep. And uh, cheers, hopefully, Mark. we'll have see you tomorrow night. And for anybody that missed it uh, earlier, tomorrow night we'll we'll be going live again, uh, kind of the more official live. I really tonight's just kind of the update live, and tomorrow I want to have fun, so I wanted to get the the bad news out of the way, get that done with. Um, and then tomorrow night we'll be over on Mash Metal and be Grunge Night, so have all your favorite Ooh, yeah. grunge music prepared. Yeah, or if you hate grunge music, you can just shit on it the whole time. I don't care. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Whatever whatever you want to do. Uh join the army after shaving every day for five years. I can have a yeah, have a beard in a week. For sure, yeah. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. Well, um, I'll try <laughs> I, I probably need to make uh, find a way to make this story shorter. Um but anyway, short of it is, Dad went in the hospital last Tuesday because uh, he's been having a heart issues for about a year now, AFib primarily. Um, then we got moved up to another hospital, uh, next town over, basically, because it's a bigger hospital. And that hospital, Wednesday night, he went into cardiac arrest. Um, they were able to get him back because, thankfully, we're in the ICU, and they were quick in there in like 10 seconds. Got him back. He was on a ventilator for 36 hours. Um, and that was all that, those couple of days were not fun. Uh, took him off the ventilator Friday morning and thankfully he was fine. Um, no brain damage as far as we can tell, everything's good. Um, and then there was just kind of like the recovery period. Cause you know, when you do chest compressions, apparently you break ribs. That's, uh, just the nature of the beast. Yep. Um, yep. also he had collapsed lungs from that as well. Uh, so just a lot of, um, like breathing recovery. I can't think of the right word. That's not the right word. Breathing. We have a medic. We have a medic right here somewhere. Well, maybe not. I guess Groovy's not here still. But anyway. It's going to hurt when he breathes. Yeah. But so he's recovering from all that still. And then uh, this last Wednesday, they put a pacemaker slash uh, defibrillator in, uh, which was very fast. Um, and so he's got that going on now. And so basically, I mean, he's pretty much out of the woods. He's, you know, as best as it can be, but it's, uh, it's been a long week. We just came back from the hospital. They sent us up to Lexington Baptist health after the cardiac arrest. Um, that's where the procedure was done for the pacemaker and defibrillator. Um, and so, yeah, uh, we just got back last night late, um, mm -hmm. and back into town. So yeah, yeah, for so, sure, Mike. It was uh, it was very stressful. For sure. So it's bad news with a little hint of good news, right? Yeah, I mean it's good now. Uh, like you know, if you'd asked me last Wednesday evening, <laughs> hard to say. Uh, but yeah, I mean, thankfully, it went as well as dying can go. Um, you know, so yeah, and didn't happen. Well, no, he, he was definitely dead for seven minutes. I mean, technically. Yeah, a, a little bit, but, yeah. you know, when you come back, it hurts. Yeah. I mean, it, it definitely is uh, a traumatic tell, experience. When he woke up, did you tell him who the president was? Well, no, like, so that's the thing is, like, because uh, they had him had him heavily sedated and everything, mainly because of the ventilator, because, you know, they don't want you pulling that out or anything, because that's your natural inclination is, like, get this crap out of my throat. Right, right. Um, and so they have him heavily, heavily sedated from Wednesday evening all the way till Friday morning when they pulled him off it. And uh, so, like, when he woke up Friday morning, unfortunately, like, we had been with him basically every single minute, and the nurses, like, assured us that he was on such heavy sedation that he wouldn't come out of it. And we hadn't slept in, like, 36 hours. 
Holy shit. So we'd, we'd booked a hotel there in Lexington, and we followed the ambulance up there from Somerset, which is like a two-hour-ish drive. And so by the time we got all settled and everything, it was about four in the morning. And so we're like, well, okay, let's go to the hotel, just get like a few hours of sleep just to kind of refresh, get some showers, and then we'll come back. And, of course, he wakes up the three hours that we're gone, and nobody's around, and it's dark, and he's like, where the hell am I? And, you know, so that sucked. But anyway, when we got there, uh, the nurses already explained what had happened and everything. But um, and so when when the nurses told us that we were kind of worried, um, you know, if brain function was good and stuff, but it was just the drugs. So, yeah, I mean, it's he's he's as good as he can be. I mean, as far as we can tell, no brain damage at all or anything like that. So that's uh, yeah, he's still he's still my dad. So that's that's the the good news. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, I'm really, really glad that things are okay, you know, to the level that they are. Um, before I was heading to bed, I was writing two sympathy cards, three sympathy cards for people who've lost their dad in the past um, three days. Um, oh, wow. Man. Oh, man, I'm sorry. Thank you. So I got some friends that I'm, I'm going to need to go to some wakes at some point, um, kind of just waiting. So, um, you know, it's... You just don't know when your last moments are, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I've thought about that a lot this last week. Yeah. Hell, we all going, we all going, you know? Yeah. I mean, I mean that's something we got to go, come to terms with. I mean, we, we hate to see people go, but we all going. Yeah. Wow. Me and Jimmy, uh, sorry, I was kind of, explain it again but yeah i have a great night man appreciate the support as always uh cheers to you buddy cheers. you're still here okay sean i guess i'm drinking miller light down tomorrow right <laughs> Wait, we don't have to... i just saw that so i gotta get beer tomorrow yeah sure. no uh i'm just doing this so i can kind of wind down tonight and be functional tomorrow but normally you're drinking milk ultra so uh, all of a sudden sure. I got miller light i'm like yeah do you, do you think it's fair to ask people uh to to have their grungiest whiskey Grunge yeah, there you go. Yeah, that'll be fun. We can What's... go through all the crap that we never drink because it's garbage. Yeah. Somebody uh, gonna... I don't have Jim Beam White Label, so, you know, I don't know. I have, I have, a, I have a whole bunch. I have like a, there's a pile of whiskey bottles over there that are the do not drink pile. Great. So we're going to drink 80 proof and get stupid. I so we got JTS yeah. Brown 80 proof here, Jonathan. There, there you go. go. Yeah. Cheapest bottle I ever bought, nine ninety nine for this one. Wow. Well, Jake's. There you go. Okay. Uh, okay. Wood's not a fan. Um, so, you know, not to spoil tomorrow night, but I'm not the biggest Nirvana fan. And I know that's kind of sacrilege among the grunge fans. But, either. I'm not. Uh, they're like my, th of the the big four, although I, I've never really thought that STP was even grunge in the first place. And I don't think yeah. Soundgarden is either or Alice in Chains, but nonetheless, uh, those are the usually the big four. Uh, and then, well, there's Pearl Jam if you count them for anything. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Like some Stone Temple Pilots seems grungy, but some of it's not. You know, I feel like Alice and Change is like the most of that list besides Nirvana. Well, I mean, I always thought of them as having a little more edge, like a little more of a metal vibe than mm -hmm. the. Yeah, but you're just glorifying it because you like it. I mean, some people call it butt rock, some people call it grunge rock. You know what I mean? It's yeah. That's that's fair, you know, um, and like I'm with, you, I'm with you though. That's my music, you know. So, yeah. and then uh, Soundgarden is like almost like uh, doom rock or doom metal, like more of like a, almost like Black Sabbath vibes at times. I mean, you know, not the same sound at all, but I mean, I I I would imagine that Chris and the boys were influenced by that sound. Would you consider mm. Bush to be? That Bush is definitely thing? grunge. Yeah. Yeah. Temple of the Dog. Eh. I yeah. like Temple of the Dog. Same. Mm, yeah, better so. better than Eddie on his own. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a Pearl Jam fan. Also, spoiler for tomorrow night. We'll talk like about that. Like I said, it. Eddie Vedder Cookie Monster. That's... Yeah, we'll probably we'll probably play some Eddie Vedder memes tomorrow at some point. Um... <laughs> Sean, do you have a favorite Soundgarden song? Oh, that's tough, man. There's so many. Uh, Soundgarden is my favorite of the bunch, just by the I way. Would, 
I would say for me too, but like I, Good luck picking a song, just one. Yeah, um, like Fell on Black Days would be pretty high up there. Um, the Day I Tried to Live would also be pretty high on the list. I'm probably going way back to Rusty Cage. Yeah, Rusty you know, Cage. Just, I've been, I've saw Soundgarden probably 20 times, and I love when they open with Rusty wow. Cage. It just, just makes me want to just start running into a crowd. <laughs> Uh, limo wreck would be pretty high on the list as well. And then also Jesus Christ pose. Um, yeah, there's man, I have a ton of favorite sound garden songs. So yeah, it's hard to what about, what about audio slave? You can just play any one of them. They sound the same dude. Yeah. I mean, audio yeah. slave that, that, that one album they had was like cover to cover gold. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, audio slave is, is, you know, just say. I mean, I, I can I'm listen not... to "I Am the Highway" all day while I'm driving. Yeah, yeah, that's a great song, and uh, I like uh, "Like a Stone," but I prefer Chris by himself rather than the the album version. Um, okay. <clears throat> there's a there's an acoustic recording that was done on a AOL radio of all things. Um, wow! But that's my favorite version of that song. It's just Chris and a guitar, and it's my favorite version of "Like a Stone." Yeah, I've got some videos um, from a music hall in Boston where he played an acoustic show, um, you know, bef probably maybe a year and a half before he left us. Um, yeah, it was an amazing show. Yeah, I mean, Chris, just in general, it's he's like my favorite person yeah. from that era. Yeah, he was uh, he was a special like, guy. You want to put singers up there with Halford and Dito. You got to put Carnell up there. Yeah. One of my buddies is a, like a massive Chris Cornell fan. He's one of the gentlemen, you know, I used to go to the shows with. And one day we were drinking at his house um, before Super Bowl. And I looked at his wife, who I grew up with, um, you know, from grade school. And I looked at her and I says, I says, hey, Jeff, I, I says, do you know what your wife has in common with Chris Cornell? And he goes, I don't. And I go, look at their hair. It's about the same. And uh, I says, are you that in love with Chris Cornell? And he like spewed his beer all over his living room. <laughs> it's just a random conversation. <laughs> like, dude, only you, you know. Uh, now, wh which era of Chris Cornell, though, are we talking yeah, about? Ta we're talking about the parted, wavy, you know. Yeah, okay, I got you. Hair, the, yeah. the, the latter days of Chris, yeah. Yeah, still. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime you can, you know, relate to his, uh, his loves and passions, it's pretty fucked up. <laughs> And and Mike, I'm totally calling bullshit. So I'm, I'm pretty sure you have heard. Something. I mean, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Look at how happy Mike is in that in that photo. He might not know who Soundgarden is. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, Soundgarden like got me through my teenage years before I left and became a crazy person. Um, yeah, man, lots of time with like the black light on and all the lights out and being freaking drugged out of my mind, laying on my carpet. And I got home from school, listening to sound garden. How about screaming trees? Mm, I'm too old for this crowd. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it may have been different music, Jody. I'm sure that you can. Uh, yeah, uh, I've been blitzed out before. Yeah. <laughs> And it wasn't Bob Dylan. It was later than that. But, yeah. yeah. You know, actually, Bob Dylan's death day is coming up here in like a week or two. It, I think I think Jigs nailed it. That's a little pop. That's oh, a he's little finally going to pass away, Sean. Um, okay, so uh, here's what I'll it. say. Well, I don't mind playing any grunge music tomorrow, uh, including Pearl Jam, although I'd rather not. But I would rather not play those songs. They are awful, oh. uh, especially Lump. Lump has yeah. to be the dumbest song written by a human ever. Um, mm. It's just a pointless, stupid-ass song. It goes nowhere. Uh, tell me what it's about. If you can tell me what it's about. Was. That was the point of the album, wasn't it? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Well, that was a dumb idea. I never cared enough about them to ever investigate anything. I, I don't care. <laughs> yeah you know i think if you asked ai to create something based on the presidents of the united states of america the band it would probably explode and catch fire so actually uh i thought where you're going with that jonathan is that lump would be the song they would come up with um <laughs> and, yeah, that would be the ai and, uh, uh, yeah. fair you enough you yeah. could probably play ai music on here and not get fucking flagged that's true <laughs> Yeah. I was thinking the ex-president's cartoon for Saturday Night Live. 
Yeah, yeah, I like that. Go. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm still, I'm still. I we need to put it to a vote, folks. It's the only thing that our vote should ever be used for, and that's we need to somehow get on the ballot. Uh, instead of voting for our next president, we need to have the two candidates fight in a death match, and whoever wins. Um, that, to be boring these so days. you're going to get your wish because I think whichever one doesn't die might actually end up in office. <laughs> yeah, or just who who gets the presidency? Yeah, I think there's a good chance they both could die before November. We just have a hologram. There you go. I mean, some of the uh, bands are finally like something we're celebrating. You know. <laughs> I'm just saying, some of these songs are like whiny. I did you wrong. I'm so sorry. You're my girl. I hate myself. I mean, what the fuck? You know, I mean, yeah, you know, I, I hate I those songs that go there. I, I love the darkness of humanity, Jody. I don't know what to tell you. Um, well, I do too, but I don't like uh, giving. Uh, the edge to someone who doesn't deserve an edge. And some of these songs that some of these freakazoids write is just all about, ah, oh, I fucked up. My life is fucked. Uh, you're the best thing that ever happened to me. You're, you're such a glorious thing. And no, yeah, I, no, I, I agree with you there, Joey. I don't, I don't you know, like uh, songs that glorify women. There's too much of that going on. <laughs> well, I, well, I didn't go all the way there. They're, just they're equally, they're e we're all equally shitty. Like it's, they're not. Yeah, we're all so, equally so, shitty. And yeah. the more you tell someone you're shitty, the shittier they get toward you. You know, type yeah, thing. Yeah. It goes both ways. J Jody, I just, I just need all of us to kind of go back in time to look at that era, and it like predated like, uh, you know, antidepressants, and you know, in the definition yeah. of all, all of our fucking feelings, you know. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I, however it came out, you know, that was the beginning of the end, you know, uh, yep. because every time someone says I'm the shittiest thing on earth, the other person always says, yes, you are. And I'm better. And there's no, 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 there's no give and take. It's like <laughs> they're looking for an upper hand and we, we were just looking for somebody we could get along with back then, you know. I hear yeah, that. Pri prior that's, to that, that's, that's, that's why we all hang out here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Sean, I, I, I just wanted to say something to piggyback off of what you said about you know you you appreciate the darkness and humanity. Um, I was having a conversation with one of my doctors recently, and um, you know, talking about like you know where my struggles have been over the last couple of weeks since I having uh, another concussion, and uh, I, I said I. I live every day with a lot of hate and I go, that kind of drives me. I don't understand why it's just, you just throw up angry and whatever. And uh, I says, I just can't control those feelings right now, you know? And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of weird to admit that, but that, um, that angst and that rage and whatever, that that's just the fire inside of me that gets me to do what I have to do every day. It isn't, it isn't, you know, because of pop music and bullshit, you know? Uh, I mean, very honestly, Jonathan, I feel very much the same. Uh, I'm just fueled by hatred. I mean, that, that you know, if we're if I'm being completely honest and transparent, that's why I drink. Um, like it's like the only way I don't just go on a killing spree. Uh, but the thing is, is like my killing sprees. That's my issue with like all these like mass shootings. They're always just killing the innocent. They they're it's never directed at the problem. Um, I mean, they can borrow my list anytime, man. Yeah. Um, like I don't, I don't understand these these shooters with like just no goal in mind. I probably shouldn't be talking about this live. Uh, <laughs> anyway, you're gonna get flagged. You're gonna get flagged. All right. I'm just saying. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of. All I'm saying is there's a lot of very bad people. We see them on our TVs a lot of the time. We and, do. Uh, the They're the anger, politicians. Yeah, the anger is never aimed there. It's at like innocent school kids, which I I don't really understand that. But anyway. I, you know, some, something changed in my life when I was 30, you know, somebody gave me the advice to build my life's value where I won't throw it away on a drink or a bad decision. And mm -hmm. that seemed to, you know, put a line in front of me a long, long time ago. And it's, it's, it's been reasonably healthy. It's just been, uh, you know, just to be able to feel the, you know, the rage and the frustration and work through it. Like I just, I, for some reason, I don't have that capacity back yet. I don't, I don't know where it is. So, um, life's been just hard lately. I hear that, man. Uh, kick Mike out. 
<laughs> You're done. What, what did Mike say? Just listen to Rusty Cage, not a fan. No. Oh, yeah. Okay, right. Uh, Love you, Mike. Bye. I, I'm curious what Mike's music interests are. Uh, let's get into the, the mind of Mike. Uh, I just Yeah, who doesn't like Fat Bottom Girls? Yep. Yeah, John. Fat bottom girls make what? the rotten world. Well, I, I feel like I feel like Chris Cornell articulates words pretty well. Yeah, I disagree with that assessment, Mike. But okay. Anyway, fat bottom girls rock. They do indeed. Uh, the federal government has entered the chat. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> If you if you guys have you guys can fuck off. But anyway, hey, uh, none of us here are federal. I can tell you that right now. What? That's why I just watch porn. <laughs> <laughs> just watch hey, porn. hey, whatever gets you through it, man. You know, I don't care what you yeah. do to cope. Uh, as long as you're not hurting anybody, yeah, whatever, whatever works, man. Whatever gets you through the day. Uh, no one ever throws a brick at George Dickel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hold on, can that be a T-shirt? <laughs> it feels like a t-shirt I, uh, I, like, I feel like it needs to be a question though it needs to be like how come no one ever throws a brick in a t-shirt like candy proof sucks ass that. yeah Look, there you go I was saying earlier I wanted to have a because I don't I don't all of this behind me I have no bottle of dickle and I want a bottle of dickle on my shelf just so when someone comes over I can say hey would you like to taste my dickle just, yeah. I need a bottle of Dickel on the show. Oh, Jody, as see. soon as my bottle of Blanton's is all, is empty, I'm filling it with Dickel and I'm sharing it to as many people as possible. There you go. There you and go. they will never chase Blanton's again. Yeah. Get get, get the uh, what is the, the the Dickel single barrel or whatever it's called? Oh, the barrel uh, select, man. That's fucking yeah. Just like, yeah, just got that in there. there. <laughs> just get the eight year and call it good. Oh. Yeah. I've heard the bottle and bond is good. I just never tried any of. Uh, the it, bottle it, bond is 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 good for the price, but like yeah. there's still eighty thousand other whiskeys that are. I mean, Delan was really raving over the Bourbon School pick. Yeah, um, but I'm still Bur like, I mean, it's still dickle that. Bourbon School. Yeah, they had a pick that uh, Delan got a pick from them from out in Buffalo. Oh, okay. Brian picked up a uh, a pick. Okay, yeah, I, I got Glenn you. did a review the other day, and he really likes it. Gotcha. And I'm gonna say, Mister Jigs, for twenty five bucks. Yeah, no, get it. I don't. There's only two bourbons I've ever kicked out of bed, and both of them came from Trader Joe's. Other than that, you're good to go, man. You know, I, I, had, a you know, I had a ten year, I had a ten year sherry scotch, Jody, from Trader Joe's that I thought was pretty good. Yeah, but they need to stay away from bourbon because boy, they put some bad notes in that. Yeah, you well, know, I got the uh the 17 year uh Kirkland uh space side scotch, thanks to Ben. The and, blended uh, scotches from Costco have been really good. Yeah, pretty no, I'm not talking about Costco, yeah, I'm talking about Trader Joe's. Okay. Yeah, but that's run by hippie, so Trader Joe's is all these. <laughs> hey, cheers, Tommy D. They don't know what the hell. Hey, Ty, is. What's up, buddy? There you go. That's all you really need. I, for some reason, the rise hitting me better than the the bourbon these days. Yeah, it depends. Oh, on wait, the wait a minute. 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 Lyrics are sense senseless. You need to listen to Chris Cornell's music. Okay, his lyrics are not senseless. No, no, they're very driven. Actually, you. I feel like you're just trying to be offensive now, Mike. Yeah, <laughs> I mean. Let me go back. Well, I didn't mention, but uh, doesn't remind me. Mm -hmm. That song is awesome. Oof. There yeah, it is. I have a new song coming out called <laughs> Booty. You're right about hippies. My girlfriend loves Trader Joe's. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> a freaking hippies, man. Just a bunch of dirty hippies run that place. That place and freaking uh, Whole Foods. Oh, Everybody's fucking uh, Whole Foods. Whole Foods is, is rich fuckers that want to be hippies. Yeah, just mm. rich hippies. People that used to be hippies that now have money. Yeah. As soon as you see dirty hippies, I just think of Cartman yelling. Oh, yeah. As a, as a fat kid, I appreciate Trader Joe's. My wife's also from their hometown. But no, I love Trader Joe's, but not the bourbon. Not the bourbon. <laughs> but but the, uh, the, the, the people who, oh, okay. who 
for the chicks who have facial hair and the people who don't wear deodorant. Yeah, a lot of my little pizzas. Are you I trying eat. to say French girls with hairy pits or what? <laughs> yeah, a lot of uh, non deodorant wearing uh, dirty bitches at uh, Whole Foods and Trader Joe's. Um, but anyway, what was John? Oh, John just left. I, he mentioned something about French chicks. I go, what was the line from Home Alone? She <laughs> loves Whole Foods. Yeah, see, it's it's a, it's the same group of people. Like the yeah, we we had a we had a knockoff Whole Foods in uh, Orlando. There, I can't remember what it was called. It was same same deal, same setup. You know, eighty dollar peanut butter because it's made by a goat or whatever the fuck. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they ate peanuts, shit it out. They turned it into peanut. Yeah, butter. I, don't, I don't know what the fuck. It's, <laughs> it's, it's really expensive peanut butter. That's all I know. Um, Sean, are you drinking Balconis? No, right now I'm on freaking Miller Lite because I'm just kind of winding down. Have but... you had this, Jonathan? Oh, this will blow your mind. I yeah. haven't. I'm afraid to try it, but send it when you send something. Yeah, that's Sean. I mean, this is... It, I mean, if you like peated scotch, it's awesome. Okay. I, I, I'm i interested in trying it. I have two different try. bats of Jonathan. This is 2022, and I've got the 2020 as well. The, These uh, are insane. The Colt of Ardbeg doing well. Yeah, so when we do a that's sample swap... Yeah. I'll put those, those in there. The okay. That's I still like, I still got a note to send what to send you, and we got to go over. Yeah, I remembered yesterday to uh, save your number off Instagram. So. Yeah, I've got y'all's program in my phone, so I'll okay. send you a text next time I have. Yeah, so if we can do like a a sample night with like you, me, and Sean. It would be great. Yeah, hundred yeah, cool, percent. Yeah, I think anyone who drinks Ardbeg should be wearing like a uh, camo coat with a deer on their chest. I'm just saying. Oh, hard beggars. <laughs> well, I guess you have to put on a camo coat and have a deer on my chest. I can put a deer head on my chest right now. How's that? There you go. Do it. <laughs> and drink some hard bag. Come on, man. It's... Wear it. It's gonna be there awkward. you go. Now pour yourself an hard bag. Maybe, maybe the bag. antler. Maybe the antler can hold my mic. Let's see here. Let's get this like weaved in here. Here we go. Yeah, that's kind of working. Oh, you yeah. guys can't really see the head. Sean, Sean, you look like an A1 gynecologist right now. <laughs> That's not stinky. I wish I could wear it as a helmet. That'd be great. I mean, he he will take a look. I mean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't mind. I'm not a doctor, but I'll definitely. I'll definitely apart with that. <laughs> I'll, 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 definitely, I'll definitely get down there and give it a look. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> give it a look, a smell, a taste. Just check it out. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. You're fine. It, it didn't taste like lemons. You're you're good. Probably need some Ardbeg after that. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's what Ardbeg's for. Cordo, well, way to round the conversation back. Way to rein in this. Church of Satan's in the chat. Okay. Uh, and, and yeah, the the desserts at Whole Foods. I will give them that. Uh, there's something about like organic chocolate or whatever bullshit. That's it, it is. Uh, it doesn't make a difference. Um, no, but they have their lane. They need to stay in. Yeah. And also the the pizza, the the like the uncured pepperoni is their their pepperoni is pretty awesome. Uh, I haven't been to Whole Foods in years because there isn't one in Kentucky. I don't think. I think it's outlawed here in Kentucky. Pretty sure. Uh, My problem with pepperoni pizza now is thanks to Instagram, I got the hot hot honey and I'm hooked on it. Huh? Okay. Yeah, I, I don't like Dude, this. That sounds I, so I like, good. I'm not into the sweet. Um. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. cool. When you I don't have any pizza, I like jalapenos on it too. Yeah, normally any okay. pizza I have some kind of hot sauce on it. And still living, the next the next one says I do have a camo coat. Yeah, and I they they love our bag. So yeah, let's go. Let's go. Uh, yeah, I can put my camo coat on if I need to. I can get the crust on that pizza sucks. I haven't had it in years, Bill. So I don't even know. Probably. Probably some, you know, non-GMO weed or whatever the hell. Kosher uh, crust. How how have we not heard of a non-GMO weeded whiskey? <laughs> oh, it's coming. Just wait till all these hipsters that are getting into whiskey start making stuff, and then oh, oh my god, it's I mean, whiskey. I think it's called free whiskey. Mm. Yeah, my corn was grown over here in my greenhouse, so. And my hey, I'm not to do with it. I'm not. 
Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. It, it could be. It all, could be. There's all kinds of corn grown in different places and whatnot, and that's right. all their basis of that stuff. And, I gotta say, I, I do. Uh, I am liking what Still Austin is doing with their different varietals of corn. It's been pretty cool stuff. So yeah, what, the red and the blue. I haven't had any of that yet. Yeah. Oh, it's good. It's good. Um, I killed off um the last couple of ounces of a Balvini Caribbean cask today. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. It's a nice tasty pour I haven't had in a while. It's a cool one. Yeah, a lot of vanilla. It's very hefty, like as far as like it's like a dense flavor. It's good. Mm -hmm. Hey, John, you're back. Oh no, nope. apparently not. <laughs> well, HEB can suck the whole enchilada or the whole uh, uh, eggplant or whatever you want. Yeah, whatever the thing they're sucking. Yeah, that that whole big thing. Johnny, what state? Are you, what's that? What state are you in? No, uh, North Carolina now. Okay. I'm from all over though. Okay. I heard you all got some bad weather recently. Everything all right? Yeah, we had some rain. It wasn't bad. A little rain. Yeah. Yeah, north of us was kind of rough there for a little while that was last tuesday tuesday wednesday but i mean just some trees down nothing crazy yeah, they were saying tornado warnings and stuff you know through kentucky tennessee and yeah uh, we didn't get it because the appalachian mountains they break that shit up coming over our way you know yeah well you know it's that season so <laughs> John, I mean, happened? if a tornado makes it over uh -huh. the mountains and drops back down on us, we're probably going to get destroyed. But, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a tenacious tornado right there. That's whoever a, the whoever survives, that's going to write a song about it. I, I hope Stalzy knows that. <laughs> yeah. Called it the hopper. The hopper. Going over the mountains, yeah. Going over the mountains. There'll be, coming back there'll, down. there'll be a bunch of whiskey survival, you know. Um, I mean, a tornado survivor uh, whiskey blends and all that jazz. Isn't oh yeah, already an EH dealer that's like the tornado survivor. Yeah, like sur warehouse C tornado yeah. survivor. It's yeah. it's been been seen by zero people ever, but yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think Bruce was like saw three thousand dollars or whatever the hell it is. Yeah, yeah, it was like eight grand, and it was like it, it's. Apparently, people have said it's no different, really, from some other I'm stuff. I'm still waiting yeah. for a 1792 release for the, the warehouse collapse. There you for go. The barrel that survived the collapse. <clears throat> yeah, another thing that would uh, gimmicky things. Uh, uh, yeah, it's probably coming. Well, I feel anyway. like I should probably wash my hands after touching that skull. I want to eat pistachios, but I also may have, like, uh, you know, whatever grows on skulls. So. <laughs> Jonathan and Sean, I ducked out. I sent you both a gynecologist related kind of picture on Messenger. Oh, okay. Let's see what we got here. Is that on Instagram or text? It's on uh, Facebook Messenger. That's why I backed out and I lost my audio, so I had to back out and come back. All right, let's see if you broke the internet. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Well, while y'all are looking that up, I will say Trader Joe's has two things. Two things. They have a knockoff um it's not really coming Cheeto, through. Like the corn, you know, oh, che gross. the cheddar cheese corn thing. That's cheap. Uh-huh. And then they have pepito sauce. Oh, what is that? Um, Jonathan, we did a sample night on here one night, and I probably had six apples <laughs> after having asparagus for dinner, and it was the worst night of my life. That <laughs> makes, makes sense. Easy. I mean, you run yourself out of the bathroom after you eat asparagus and have to take. Oh a man, I love eating asparagus. It's just the after effects. Oh, that's that so like, odor. Listen, next next time you go to a steakhouse, right, and you got to go take a leak, and it, it smells like someone ate asparagus, or it was you. You just yell out, "Who ate asparagus?" You know, it's just it creates the weirdest conversation. <laughs> to do it every mm -hmm. day. <laughs> 
that is that is wily right there. I mean, that <laughs> is. Wild. And uh, Bill, good to hear that your uh, parents' folks are yeah. good after that, man. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. Speaking of New Orleans, I think we all just need to make like a group trip down to Friday at Fred's at some point. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And just eat and drink all weekend. Yeah, right, just have so a massive you know. bottle share at Friday at Fred's and just get wasted and eating I mean, jungle and crawfish and everything else. And tell them the up- just show up. Yeah, the, the upside is, you know, so freaking hot down there. As long as you drink plenty of water, you'll just sweat out all the whiskey. So Yeah. <laughs> My favorite uh, thing about New Orleans is beer to go out of every doorway. That's Oh, seriously. Yeah. Uh, New Orleans is, you know, open container, no gun laws. It's it, it's good till it's and not. The restaurants are just unbelievable. Sean, did you uh did you happen to open that package that Jig sent? I have not yet. The boxes are sitting right there, but I haven't oh, opened it. Did you get the samples, John? I, I did. I was just curious. I still have them wrapped in plastic, but I took a picture of the list, and I'm like, oh, my God. Well, maybe um, maybe that can uh, – because that, that's not like we're not doing that as a group. So maybe tomorrow night we can get well, in. Well, we were talking about J- – J- uh, Jig said if he wanted to do it as a live, so I'm going to hold on to it. Same oh, I know okay. Ben's on the road right now. Same okay. There is some good Here. stuff in there. There, there is something. Keep, keep the bottles upright because they, um, they don't have the plastic inserts inside the caps. Okay, that's you know, good to know. You know, it has the paper top, the you know, the wax paper top or whatever. It is. These things. Hopefully, I'm not losing whiskey. Yeah, if you look at the piece of paper that's in there, what's in there? My God, he is yeah. such a nice guy. <laughs> no, I was, I was just kind of saying, like, you know, some people say those, those, those sample bottles can mess with the whiskey. I don't know. Yeah. So the oldest beam I've had is a 1970, and it was amazing. I mean, if you open them and just smell them, a couple of those smell absolutely amazing. They're only like 80 oh, or 90 proof. I still have the whole bundle wrapped in plastic. God damn. I'm going to mute for a second. I'm having a sneeze fit. All right, Jody. Take some of the, uh, the the 1990s or the 1980s ones and just open them and smell them. It's It's... It'll make you forget about asparagus gynecology. Yeah, I just want to keep. I don't, I don't know if we're going to do those as a group or not. So I'm just kind of. I have that with the other samples we need to do yet. Yeah, mine are mine are off to the side too. Yeah, you know, I, that, that is. Yeah, we'll hold it till Ben's back. I took a picture and sent it to a couple of friends locally. They're like, "Holy crap!" Like, yep. Yeah. Thanks, Jigs. Yes, yeah, very much so. Yeah. Cheers, buddy. Hopefully I hope better. we do that live. That would. He would do more justice to do it live together. Yeah, for sure. I mean, kind of like the the fuck your train stuff, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is, is cool. It's always cool. with the two hundredth. Is that the bottle that Tats has? I've never heard of it. You know, it might be, he he was showing off something. I thought that's the bottle that Tats has. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. All right, I'm back, but I had a sneeze fit. Sneeze fest. It's best. A sneeze I mean, fest. You talk about the, the Beam 200, like, but that Turkey 13 you sent me from Chris, my God, was that awesome. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty tasty. Oh, that was from when you had your celebration, right? But I drank yeah. eight of the yeah, samples well, for two hours, and I was done for the night. <laughs> Yeah, we uh we hit it pretty hard that night. Um, yes, yeah, Rebecca so. Creek was worth the hype. Yes, second second box jigs. Mm-hmm. Let's see here. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, jigs. Thank awesome. you very much. But those are some pretty is, good bottles that are in there. A cast ring. I've never seen the cast ring. Um, and jigs. Also, where did you get this packing stuff, man? This is this is really cool in itself. Uh, I'm probably one of the few people who gets excited about packing material, but, um, Oh my God, you just save it and reuse it. (laughs) Heck yeah, man. That's why it's so exciting. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) U-line. Oh, so, uh, a different, which, which ECBP, uh, C923 is this Jigs? What's the, the, uh, the laser code? Don't say it. (laughs) 
No, I, me and Ben, we have sent each other different ones. So, but I guess there's like three or four actually all together. I'm going to trade Blanton's uh, straight from the barrel samples with Ben when he gets back. He apparently he has a different proof than I, I just got. Oh, okay. That's cool. Yeah. One of my local stores has had been holding it for a long time, and it was a couple weeks ago. He's like, "It's it's time." So, yeah. Okay, I think that's the one I have. Um, but thank you either way. Uh, let's see here. What is mine? Where is it? Somewhere in this row. This is. I don't know if I can see it in this light. Uh. A2223. Whatever that means. Which apparently, which apparently is the Bad Batch. I mean, I thought it was pretty good, but whatever. It, Let's say laser coated. I don't need to drink more. Sean, Sean it's, it's not a Bad Batch to me, but it like when I blinded that with the A Batch and a store pick, it like it tied for the first. You know, like I, I just think it, it's a great batch. I just think one variation is a tick different. Um, gotcha. I think the next person who sends you a, a C923, they shouldn't tell you which laser code it is. You should just have to blind it against the bottle you have. Yeah. Well, I mean, either either way, it's going to get blinded at some point. Like, uh, you know, mine, Ben has a different one. And then I guess the one Jig sent it, is potentially the same. I don't know. Because I feel like there's a couple that start with 22, but indifferent. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong on that. It's been a while since you have cared about the laser code thing so i've kind of forgotten all the different things but anyway which i mean honestly took like five minutes because my memory is shit but uh sean hope you're doing all right yeah man uh things are better now big cat i'm gonna go through all the things again but uh things are better now is the short of it um, just hope, hope it stays that way dude yeah yeah for sure that's yep. yeah um yeah you I mean it should He's got all the, like the, I mean, because basically all the the stuff they put in his chest now is like backup to make sure that things stay good. So, yeah, punctured lungs and all that stuff. You know, are those, you know, you know, it's just it's touchy. You know. Yeah. Well, I, I guess. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I guess that, like, as far as we can tell, no lungs were punctured. It, it was just like when it made the lungs oh, collapse. It was just the. Yeah, just the compressions themselves. So, gotcha. Gotcha. And, and it looks like those of reinflated, I guess is the right term. I don't know. I'm not a medical person. Um, I, I build things anyway. Uh, but yeah. And like the, uh, you know, cause like at the end of your lungs, there's like these little air sacs and like those had collapsed. And from what they could see, like on the second to last day we were in the hospital, like it looked like those, we're doing better. So good. So now it's just because also what happens when, when your lungs collapse is like fluids build up and stuff. So, yeah. Um, so it's just kind of like a process of getting that out, which he's been doing, which is gross. Cause you know, he's coughing up like phlegm and blood basically, you know, it's not a lot of blood, but there's some blood in there. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it's just, uh, getting back to normal ish. But well, it's not comfortable. That's what I was saying earlier. He's in some pain. Oh yeah. Here and there, you know. Yeah. When's your dad's birthday? Uh this is the thing I should probably know. February twenty third. Okay. Yeah. Well, next birthday, half birthday, whatever, they'll be special. Yeah. Yeah, it turns seventy mm -hmm. in February. Um yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, more than anything, uh, I think it was John that said it, you know, you, you just kind of start reflecting on, you know, time you could have spent, things like that. So mm -hmm. it, it certainly kind of wakes you up to priorities in life, I guess. Well, Sean, it's important that you say what's on your mind, regardless of how it makes someone feel. Oh, wait, I'm, I forgot who I was talking to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of an asshole. Uh, no, but... <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, at some point I feel like there are a couple of conversations, you know, that I may want to have with my dad. Uh, but you know, I don't not, he should be good for a little while. Anyway, I want to like hit him with it now. Um, 
but things that you know we've put off. Mm -hmm. But anyway, another time. And you know, and life is hard. You know, it's like, uh, like that. Like one thing, me and my mom were talking about when we were at the Airbnb after we kind of knew that he was going to be relatively okay. Is uh, is that and just. Like, you know, like I'm aware now that I'm older that, you know, like, cause you have this perspective of your parents when you're young, that's not really quite right. Cause you don't understand what it means to be a man in this world. So, um, and so like, you, as you get older, you start understanding that, yeah, sure. Your, your dad was messed up, but so are you. And so was his dad. And so was the guy before him. And, mm. and so like, it's just, this, this ever growing ball of shit that's just continually rolling downhill and you're just the end of that. And so it's like, you know, so then you realize that, you know, things aren't as much their fault as you made them to be. Um, cause it's just, cause you don't understand what the world is. Oh man. I, I know, uh, I'll talk to you off stream sometime, but I know exactly what you just said. Um, yeah. Yeah, like so much so. Um, I was visiting family out in Nevada um, back at the end of February, and you just start learning more about your family and things that you just didn't know. And it kind of, it all adds up as, like you say, the tail end of the shits, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, but for whatever it's worth, you know, assuming everything goes right, um, you know, it's a gift, man, because, you know, all the things yeah. you avoid, you have a second chance to. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm incredibly thankful for sure, um, because yeah, it could have been over last Wednesday night for sure. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. So. Cool. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you just had me thinking. It's wild. Yep. Yeah, you know, it's just. Uh, I th I think you know we tend to be probably too hard on our parents, especially when we're young. And then you realize that life is really hard <laughs> and it's, it's not easy to do this, especially raising kids. Like, I mean, I don't have any on purpose cause I'm a freaking psycho. Um, so like, you know, I intentionally never had any, um, you know, and yeah. like, even now, like, you know, I'm 41 and I still don't feel like I'd be a great dad even now, even with all the life experience I have. So, you know, he was doing it at 29 um, and like, I was still like a, an idiot at 29. <laughs> so, you know, it's not same. Yeah. It's, it doesn't get better. It does not get better. I I'll mean, tell you that you either have kids or you don't. And if you do, you fuck them up. And if you don't, you don't fuck them up. I, I, I talked to a lot of people, you know, uh, just being a realtor, you know, people who are parents and, you know, they, they say that. I'm the best version of myself because of my kids, regardless if you're fucking the kids up or not, you know? Yeah. Well, um, I'm just saying, you know, yeah. they can always claim you fucked them up, whatever. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I'm 43. We don't have kids. And I think my only motivation in life to even consider having kids is with how messed up the world is today. I just want there to be another independent thinker who isn't, you know, a pre-programmed moron. Mm -hmm. You know, I just want someone to fight through, through all that bullshit. And I, I don't think that opportunity is going to come about. So, um, you know, the rest of it is just speaking my mind and making people think, you know, and yeah, with what I do for a living, you're talking about dealing with 25 to 30 year olds and in everything that they're pre-programmed to know and just making them question it all so they can make an intelligent decision. And you think like I'm glorifying buying a house, right? Most people have no idea what they actually want. They never stop and ask themselves what's important to them. And it, you know, I don't, for the people who need me to be a doormat, I'm just not interested in working with those people. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, I think for a lot of people, like buying a house is like that pie in the sky kind of dream thing. And they don't really take the time to understand what it is exactly. Or like to, to your point, like what their actual needs are. You know, it's just like, well, let's get the most expensive house we can afford, which is the worst thing you could possibly do. But it isn't hard to do anything to the damn house. When it, uh, I mean, 
you know, for, for to, to each their own. Right. And, and I tell people this, you know, who are long divorced now, you know, if three years ago you had two more rooms in your house. Would that have solved a lot of problems? You know, people never look at the big picture. They're always looking at things in a vacuum. And yeah, um, it's a lot of self-sabotage and ignorance. And I tell everyone, if you want to be successful, just give me 20 percent, you know, flexibility on your vision and and we'll find what's out there. You know, the answers to life are always in front of you. The question is, is do you have tunnel vision or can you see them? Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, like right now, every single day, I'm my my only goal, you know, fuck work. It literally is to try to get some sort of joy and normalcy out every day because that's kind of restoring order to chaos right now. It's just to have an hour or two of, you know, without frustration, you know. Um, Man, this shit just got deep. Okay, go ahead. Hey, man. Um, <laughs> cheers to that. What's that? That's a cheers to... Yeah, cheers man. To uh, that. That's what I was about yeah. to say. Is, uh, I got I to gotta pour something for that. Um, My dad's 82, and I'm still thankful to have him around every day. I think I'm going to pour this. Uh, yeah. Rebecca's Creek. This, this is my whiskey of the year last year. It feels right. Um, yeah, man. You know, as, as Wood said earlier, you know, because not, not just my dad, like we're, we're all at around the age where we're either losing our dads or they're getting older yeah. or we've lost our dads already. But either way, you know, uh, cheers to dads, whether they're here or gone either way. Uh, all right, I'm gonna grab a beer, but y'all go ahead and cheers it. And this, this, this this week has made me really appreciate that. So yeah, cheers to all the. I dads. would say, I mean, mine's still here, but I would say even if they're gone, they're still influencing you now. Mm hmm. Oh yeah, me and my dad, we've talked about it like a ton. I mean, like his old man was tough. My grandfather, you know, because he was in the war as well, and. uh <laughs> fighting over in Russia and got pneumonia and was still fighting and like, uh, nearly died from pneumonia. Cause you know, just fighting through it. Uh, and like, you know, they just didn't give a shit about you back then. It's just like, <laughs> it's just like, keep going. You know, it was World War two. And there's like, yeah, whatever. Cause he hit, he as well was in world war two and then Vietnam. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Korea. Um, same as Peter White's, uh, dad. Uh, that was my grandfather. Um, mm -hmm. And like, uh, well, anyway, I'm not going to share that story. Uh, I thought about it and I was like, I, that probably won't go well. So I'll just, I'll leave it alone. But, um, but anyway, the, the war really messed him up. He was an MP. Uh, that's what he became in service. And, uh, short of it is, is that he had to take some of his own men's life because they were not cooperating and that just ruined him. Um, you know, he just, he was never the same. Um, yeah, you know. Nor should you be. What's that? Nor should you be. That's a yeah. hard, that's an impossible thing. Yeah. yeah. War is just a shitty thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But yeah. You know, and so that was the guy, that, that's what I'm in, you know, like it's, it just all rolls downhill. So that was the guy that raised my dad. And so it's like, uh, you know, oh, well, <laughs> what do they say, Sean? Embrace the suck. Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. So, hey, man, as long as you make the best of what you got. You know? Yeah. I mean, like, I'm not a super positive person because I think that's not real logical. <laughs> um but uh, at the same time, like, I, I don't like uh, just sitting like dwell on the negative either. It's just I, I like to think of myself as a realist. It's just when, when people are like surprised by how much life sucks, I'm always like, really? Like this? <laughs> Open your eyes, man. You <laughs> must have had a really sheltered oh, wow. childhood. Yeah. Did, you, did you not see this coming at all? Like, this is pretty typical from my experience. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I, I think I think I err on the side of dwelling too much on the negative, but just in that I, reality, I probably do as well. <laughs> my 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 humor comes from 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 ev you know from everything we're talking about now, you know, and just make as many jokes. Everything is funny to me, and unfortunately, that offends so many people current day. Well, see, I, I I'm with you, Jonathan. I mean, like uh, I think there's something about having a I don't know how to call it. You know, I mean, most of you guys know what my previous life was. 
And there's something about like seeing like the worst of humanity that just makes you say like, fuck it. Everything's funny. Um, <laughs> because yeah. like, you know, then you realize that most of this is a joke. Like, <laughs> listen, man, I'll, I'll say something. Hey, Derek, man, what's up, brother? Dude, uh, the man. Oh boy. What's up, Derek? Well, that's a way to enter the conversation. Wow. That's typical yeah. for him. <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, Derek. Uh, wow. Good to see you, man. But yeah, that's. Uh, wow. Hi, Derek. That's <laughs> that's like a full metal jacket moment right there. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty whitey right there. I, uh, yeah. Sorry to hear that, thing. Derek. That's yeah. yeah. Man, you don't, have, you don't ever get over those things, you know. No, I don't know how you would. Yeah. You just try to find ways to cope, man. Um, yep. Yep. Jesus Christ. Hey, Derek, you, if you want to pop on and hang out, man, if you need to share a pour, we're here, man. Yeah. Cheers, Derek. Yeah. yeah we, already got, we already got Sean drinking, so. Yeah. Derek yeah. is one of my favorite people to hang out with on here. Yeah, yeah man. Such a great guy. Derek, Derek, all, he's all personality. Yep. Yeah, I would you just know, say I, this. Well, from my perspective, is that I grew up working on small engines, cars, you know, pistons. You know, we, we would change the pistons out. We would change uh, the motors out and everything. And and nowadays, you know, my dad looks back on younger guys and he's like, hey, y'all don't do this stuff. They can't because the companies made the cars like the new cars. you can't work on them up, anymore Good to see you man you're not wrong jody Derek, you know, what's in your glass i guess well, we, it's uh right. tears in that glass are they sir uh this is old force from 1920 with oh. some ice in it because i'm still sick as a dog but i tell you what I, I i've gone eight days without drinking and i was like well fuck it cheers Derek. that's how i usually feel as well <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I don't. I, only, I, will, I will say this to you, Sean, in, in all honesty and, and full disclosure. I wanted to jump on to say I didn't post that message to be a downer. No, I, I post that message to say no. We didn't. I didn't think you did, Eric. Kids, I was just like, wow, that's a, no, no, no. Kids, kids who better. actually have to go and defend, they see yep. a lot of shit, and. Yep. and, yep. and 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 that that stuff follows them. And Reggie ain't been right for a long time. I'm, I'm just I'm just putting it uh, out there. So yeah, I mean, and Derek, it frustrates me because those people don't get the help they need when they come back. They they yeah. they they, they don't. Sure. And, they're, and they're really they're trying with programs. But I think like for some of my friends who are veterans who've had like you know tough relationships and stuff like that, you just got to give them time and space. You know, yeah. has to be their choice mm -hmm. to talk about things and. Just like when Sean and I were talking about the things we hold on to for too long, you know, you just try to get to the, those people before it becomes a defining way of their life. Yeah. You know, and and this is and this is where I am probably not the best guy. You know, what my brother, I never once in all these years even brought up that incident in California. Um, when he was a truck driver. Black bad truck driver. And some kids figured that their little convertible could slide underneath his truck. Jesus. And they actually did it. And, and needless to say, something stopped my brother while they were sliding. And they it didn't end well for them. And my brother stayed in the truck. I was so proud of him. Because I know that the uh, the California thing fucked him up for 20 years. If he yeah. went in the back of that truck and saw those kids, mm -hmm. yeah, he wouldn't, my brother wouldn't be right. So I just believe that traumatic events affect everyone differently. And yeah. and, and I, I just believe that when, when you're in that circumstance, you know, for people who are around them, I think what you need to do is just be sensitive. Yeah, and I've and I've tried my best to be sensitive with Reggie, and I have never brought up that shit 
and I think he's happy for it. How, Derek, however, people have to you know cope. Um, I know that whenever you're on the other side of it, uh, as far as you know, getting past the trauma or finding a way to cope with it. You know, it, mm -hmm. it, it serves as a baseline, you know, of what's what's actually going to bother you and what what's bullshit. Like, mm -hmm. you know, Sean was talking about, you know, people wake up every day and complain. And we're like, seriously, this is what you think. You know, um, you just you get tougher, you know, and I think that that's a gift, you know, uh, and a curse for sure. You know, I you know what? I wholeheartedly agree with that. What I don't want any of us to to uh, and I'm going to say this because I'm I'm a rehearsed drunk. But just bear with me. I don't want. I think I think that applies to all of us there, Derek. But yeah, 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 but I'm yeah, way yeah, more rehearsed, rehearsed than you guys are. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but what I what I'm getting at is that I honestly believe that regardless of how people portray themselves, we always need to be able to recognize that dude is fucked up, and I need to stand near him. Yeah. And support him. I don't need uh -oh. to judge him, and I don't need to, you know, <laughs> as my wife do every morning. God damn it! In the morning when I get coffee, how you doing? Ah! Uh, you don't need to do any of that. Just, just stay near to them. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and and I'm not saying you need to speak softly, but you need to let them know I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, my, my, my wife is that for me, you know, and I guess I, I hear that and hey, see that. Um hey, Sean, because I'm drunk and I'm and I haven't been on here, highlight all the names if you got bring the names up, please. Oh, okay, yeah. There you go. Hey Jonathan, look here. Yes, sir. I hear you, sir. Um my wife actually does a lot to support me. You know, uh and I'm not going to go into details, but let's just say I'm damn near four months out of work. I'm I'm down in revenue of close to $120,000, $130,000. And my wife is, is as pleasant as she's going to be. And I'm, I'm, I, I'm so happy. I can't even imagine if I was still with my first wife. I, I, I sh probably shouldn't have said that shit. He's looking over his shoulders. Did you hear? If I was still with my first wife, I'd be homeless. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm, don't get me wrong, fellas. There are some changes I have to do. I've been out of work for four months. I'm going to have to sell some property. Some property I did not want to sell. I. I I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. But my family won't be affected by that cell. Yeah. But by the same token, uh, my wife has been extremely supportive <laughs> while I have been beating the hell out of myself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I find that's how it goes, Derek, you know. The tortured souls always end up with the good people. Well, there you yeah. go. There you go. Mm -hmm. you, know, I, you know what, Jonathan? You say that. But before I met my wife, I knew another gal. And the court, the great Forrest Gump, that's all I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. You know. Hopefully the the work situation in life, you know, you find your way back. Still, yeah, man. Hopefully you find something soon to. Can I? Can I? To I want to say this, and I'll shut up about it. I promise. Okay. Go ahead. I have first world issues. I did not want to go back to fintech. I did not want to go back to banking. Um, in the banking world. I was at least 80 pounds heavier than I am right now. I was on blood pressure medication, and they're about to put me on more medication as I went on. When I was able to escape the fintech world, I was able to lose weight, sleep at night, and they took me off the blood pressure medication, and I was like, yes, yes, yes. I've been out of work now since January. 
and I've applied in over 80 companies. Only two or three ever applied to me. But for some reason, the fintech world has gotten win. Oh, shit. Derek is available. And, uh, and I want to say this to you guys openly. This is the first world issue problem. I don't want to go back. Unfortunately, I have a mortgage and I have a family. I got to do what I got to do. And I don't want to go back there. I, I really don't. I honestly believe if I'd have stayed at JP Morgan, I'd be dead by now. I wasn't probably morbid, morbid, nor was I trying to bring down the mood. I'm just saying, I want to do it. However, I'm probably going to go back into the fender. Well, if I could say something, Derek, and granted, I've never worked in that field, but uh, I guess my personal thought is that all of the things you just mentioned, the mortgage and the family, that doesn't matter much if you're not here. So if your job kills you, you know, you're mentioning high blood pressure and all those things, then I don't know if it's worth it. Um, I think I'd find another way. Um, that's just my personal thought. But and, and by the way, God bless you, Sean, for even at least speaking out loud. One of the problems we have with some bitches near to me is that these motherfuckers won't open. I'm sorry. You're good. They won't open, they won't open their mouth. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, Derek. <clears throat> part of our corporate culture where, where we work, there's a, a training in in the fundamental, you know, communist life by design, not by default. You know, what's your life by design? What does that look like? Um, you know, what makes you the best version of yourself? And if you're the best version of yourself, everything else kind of falls into place. Mm -hmm. So I think it's kind of like taking what you're going through and tipping it on its head and just looking at it differently. And regardless of wherever you end up, if you ask yourself those questions, you'll be better for it. <laughs> Jonathan, I, I, Jonathan, I hear you. I there, there are some, there are some things that I, I don't bring up here in the whiskey tube world, and 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 I, I don't do it for a reason. I have successfully opened up five banks. America. I, I, I've managed teams. We opened it up, and we opened up the banks, and I went on about my business. I'm actually known in a small community. It's, oh, yeah, that's the guy that opened up this bank or that bank or this bank. Dude, I don't want to do that shit anymore. What do you want to do? Yeah, so don't do I it. Just, oh, oh, that's simple. You guys are going to laugh at me. I just want to be an engineering manager. I want to be a manager to manage people and, and direct them in their careers and uh Dude, I don't want to go back into that shit. But what but you asked, I'm sorry, let me go back to what you asked. I want to be an engineering manager of engineers where I can help them not only keep their commitments, but also guide them to their career through their careers. Because I might not look it with this damn white t shirt on, but I'm an old motherfucker. I mean, Derek, the gift the gift in your age is that you can help these young people get out of their own way. So hopefully, yeah. wait, I mean, what do you that, have to what do you have to do to get that job? Just make that, sure that you and that, and that is and that is my selling point. Is your journey, your story? Yeah. yeah. By the way, Sean, I was not trying to uh, hijack your stream. Oh no, Derek, you're you're good. We're, we were just kind of contemplating life before you hopped on anyway. So uh, you're fitting right with the theme. Um, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, tonight I didn't really plan on it being a super fun theme. That wasn't really the, you know, what I was trying to do tonight. So it's okay. You're, you're fine, man. Uh, I, pre I, I appreciate the, the real conversation. So yeah. Yeah. Tomorrow we'll get back to being degenerates. Yeah. Yeah. Tomorrow, tomorrow we'll party, but tonight that's not what we're doing. That's okay. Oh Good God, news, Sean. Tomorrow is already today. today. If you look at the time. Yeah, that's true. We're, we're almost into tomorrow. Um, but I mean, so Derek, 
I'll, I'll say this. This is just my own personal life experience. And firstly, actually, before I, I go into that, uh, don't, you know, because you said that you're an old man or however you worded it. There's a lot of value there. Don't, you know, um, be, because we, you, you know, it takes time to gain knowledge. Um, indeed, indeed, sir. And uh, AI it, just said, fuck you. Yeah. And, and so, uh, you know, and, and it, I mean, what I have found uh, from, because I, I have a lot of friends that are much older than me. Um, and what I found is that, you know, once you kind of feel like you got this life thing figured out, then you're dead. Um, so, so like it's, it's important to pass that along however you can. So that's, that's a valuable thing to have. And, you know, so to, like Jonathan said, you know, uh, these young punks out of college, they might, they might know what their teacher taught them, but they don't know how it actually works in the real world. And that's what you can do. Um, and, and, I, and I think, I think that's a valuable thing. Yeah. And actually, I think that keeps my head up. Uh, but in my opinion, I honestly believe when I thought when I left FinTech, I got in the marketing world, I got in the advertising world. I was, I was, a, I, God damn it, I was excited. I was, I was, I was about as happy as, I mean, yeah, whatever. And when I got laid off, and no one in the marketing world or the advertising world wanted to give a rat's ass about me. And I kept my 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 profile on the cover because I did not want the banks to know that I was available. Yeah. Well, an option company found me. <laughs> and they were like, oh sure, shit, sure. Eric, are you really available? They were probably on whiskey too. And yeah, I, and I, yeah. You probably, I probably, yeah, somebody is a snitch among us. That they and they when they said it to me, it was probably that men of the mid south comment that got their attention. That's why he changed his his profile under Derek Patton. <laughs> hey, hey, look <laughs> at I want, Hey, look at Sean. You better hope it's not the damn mid south thing, because I'm gonna be <laughs> fucked up if that's the case. But I, I will say this. I, I will say this. And the, the, it, it started coming on when one bank actually reached out to me. At least twenty two banks have started lining up. So I've been four months, and three people have wanted to talk to me. I mean, doesn't everyone on the stream want to hire you based on this? Like, honestly, like he's in demand. There you go. Yeah. Only two banks are after him. But Love yeah, but this, the, you know, starting yesterday, motherfuckers are all in my inbox. I'm trying to, there's a, you know, there's a clearing corporation. I do, I never wanted to work for them. I, okay. I'm okay. I'm all on the internet. I'm on the internet. I'm on the internet. Okay. Um, Let's move on. Let's just say, okay. <laughs> you don't you don't get yourself in trouble. Although I kind of doubt anybody that's in your inbox is going to be watching my stream. I have a feeling we're safe, but um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but nonetheless, yeah, it's probably probably best. But Derek, what I was going to say a minute ago is that me and my wife made the decision five ish years back. We were living down in Florida, Orlando, Kissimmee area. You know, the city life and all that bull crap. Um, and living, you know, just to pay bills. And I was just fine. Like, I'm not going to do that anymore. Um, and so I got to talk to my parents and they're living in this small town in Kentucky that no one's ever heard of and probably never will. And, uh, my dad's like, man, stuff is just dirt cheap here. Housing is cheap. And, I was, and so I, you know, we were talked more about that. And so finally we moved and I would never go back now. I mean, like we can live on almost nothing. Like I'm, I'm never stressed about bills now. Like even, I mean, cause multiple times my wife has lost her job since we've been up here. Didn't matter. Um, you know, and like this whole, this whole whiskey thing, this would never be possible down in Florida. I would never be able to do this. Um, and I mean, well, I could have, but I would have had to work more hours and stuff I didn't want to do. What's the economy like in Florida compared to where you are? Oh, well, okay. So. 
Well, I mean, I'll just very, very open because I don't care. I, I'm very proudly probably the poorest person on whiskey tube, and I'm proud of that. America. Uh, um, because you know, hey, we live in a way hey, he's selling baby. Yeah. I have no job. <laughs> yeah, so my, my job. Income, my, job so my, <laughs> so my income right now is zero, baby. Well, I, I, but I'm I'm just saying, Derek, your your net worth is still probably more than mine. But um, <laughs> no, that's not true. If it was, if currency were hats, you got his ass, ass whooped. Well, there you go. Yeah, yeah. You're not counting the hats. But uh, but anyway, um, but what I'm saying is, like, I just kind of decided a while ago that that doesn't matter to me. Um, and and this is the happiest I've ever been. Uh, so. You know, I, I guess to my earlier point is that, you know, and, and that's a thing that you and your wife and your family have to talk about, but, uh, you know, that's between you and your family. But uh, I found that living simply works best for me. And I, and I realize that, that sounds crazy to most people because that's not what most Americans strive for. Most Americans strive for a lot of stuff that's never made me happy. Um, and if it does you, then great. Um not shitting on that it's you know to each their own kind of thing but uh you know i do very simple things with most of my life i have a very simple job i'm not like using my brain power to its highest potential or anything like that don't care um you know i don't have a fancy job but none of that shit matters like it doesn't mean anything it's all bullshit that we think we need to do and it doesn't mean a fucking thing um i'll be perfectly honest with you i wholeheartedly agree with you yeah, I think that I have a, a very large house, and that's because I got this house around the uh, the pandemic, if you will. Yeah, right before it doesn't matter. All three of us need to be online at the same time, and I didn't want us all all up on each other. And and when we have done well. And this is my space, and most of you have got the recognized Marcus Stavi right up here. Okay. Um, there you go. Most of you, guys, most of you guys have recognized that, but no, I don't do anything. I and my wife has an office near the L tracks, which I will never have. Kayla has her schooling out here. Now that you know that is gone, Sean has a point. Maybe I don't need this house. Nobody does. That's what I mean. <laughs> it's just things that we think we need. Well, you know, you know the, the interest rates are kind of fucked up, uh, Sean. That's so. true. It's, it's not a great... I, I mean, I don't know what the housing market is like in your area, but typically yeah, it, across yeah, the state yeah, is down. I, I, I want some low interest rates so they can come and yeah, um, give me some coke and hose. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the dream. That is the dream. I, um, I, I, I can I can tell you, you know, when I was younger, the, the pursuit of greatness in this, you know, life was there. Now it's about preserving it or being able to um, to have fuck you money to be able to just like walk away. Um, and every year and every fucking health problem that I find, I, you know, I'm more worried about what it's going to cost me to exist later in life. So we just try to keep fighting through it. That's, you know, I, I'm certainly a fear driven person when it comes to that. You know, my, this, it seems like almost every year since I was 18, there's been something. So, uh, yeah, you know, I, I couldn't, I can't imagine what my life's going to be like at 50, 60 or 70 at, at fucking 43. It's already a disaster. <laughs> you know what? I would say, you know what, John, hey, let, let, back. John, John <laughs> let me holler. Jonathan, let me holler at you for a second. Yeah, go ahead. I, I, I believe you do the best you can for as long as you can. Yeah. Uh, I have absolutely no savings. Let's just put that out here. Right? I own six I own six properties. And that's because a long time ago I was in a buying mood. My book no, that's not important. What's what's important is the fact that it is that I'm going to have to start selling some of those properties, Jonathan. This job market is not my friend. Yep. 
I I have managed. Oh, and I'm you know none of my boys are here. I might have to sell my car. And for all of you guys that have made fun of my V6, that V6 has less than 40,000 miles. There you go. People want it. I have no idea why, but they do. And the yes, John. Sheets, Good night, brother. Leather sheets and everything else. It's for the same yeah. reason they want Blanton. Are you out, John? Huh? Or- Me? I, I thought John was saying he was out. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I asked Z-Man if he had a good nap. That's all. Oh, okay. So, sorry, sorry for interrupting, Derek. Continue. Hey, Z-Man. Z-Man, how you doing, sir? I'm doing good, dude. How you doing, brother? Shit, I haven't seen you in forever. No. Well, Ed, what, you sna- you, what are you Cheers, snacking Cheers, on? Jody. Have a good night. Yeah, night, Jody. Have, have a good one, man. Appreciate Bye, you. Jody. Derek, life's happening before us, brother. You know that. Cheers to you, man. Yeah, uh, Derek, what what do you own, man? What's the V six? Oh, I feel like, I feel like I've seen a picture, but I can't remember. It's a Dodge Charger. Oh, that's right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I haven't sold it yet, but I'm 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 I'm, I'm, I'm about to sell it. <laughs> and and I want all of you guys to know this wholeheartedly. I'm only selling that Charger because one gangsters have an, an irrational. Uh, 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 attachment to that car. Yeah. Car That's dealers it. all over Chicago are messing with me going, dude, you still have that car? And and if they see the miles that are on my car, you know, they might send their daughters out to me. <laughs> <laughs> one one can only hope, you know. I don't need that shit in my life, Sean, but I will say <laughs> I no, nobody needs it, but it's appreciated. I just want the cash. Um, it was just I want the cash. <laughs> and so that's my that's my next plan was to get rid of my car. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, I want all the guys to do because I'm gonna say this, and god damn it, Ben is not here. I'm gonna say it. Uh, I'm gonna cry when I actually sell my car. I'm that's gonna okay. cry. I'm gonna cry. I want all the guys to know. I, I, I'm going to go by myself without my wife in her truck and I'm going to weep like a bitch when I actually sell that car. Okay, I'm done. Hey, you know, here's at the end of the day, though, Derek, it'll be okay. It's just a car. I, I understand it, though. I've had to sell some cars that I really enjoyed having at different points in my life. Yeah. Oh yeah, baby. Oh, just yeah. stuff, though, man. Just stuff. No, yes. no, no, child, child, child. You're 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 intellectually correct, yeah. and I am not. I'm not actually dif- saying anything differently. This is what I need to do because I'm. God damn it! I'm gonna say something. Yeah, I got a family. I got a mortgage. I got some shit. I gotta do. Yeah, I hear you. And that damn. People mover that my goddamn wife has. That'll work for that'll work for us. <laughs> People mover, yeah. I like People that. I like that. Yep. I'm having some dickle. There you go. Okay, yeah. Fancy yeah. dickle. Fancy dickle. Expensive dickle. Yeah. Good for, you. Good for you, man. Are you just feeling like punishing yourself, or uh, uh, honestly, you definitely get that like. You know that chalky vitamin note, but it's the you know, like like I I said this a couple of weeks ago that if they just name this cigar blend, somebody would buy it. You know. Oh, for sure. Yeah. You know, because because it's triple finish and actually goes slamming with a cigar too. Mm. What what's do you know what the general age of that is? I don't. Doesn't say. Oh, okay. I mean, it drinks like it's at least six years, truthfully. Yeah. But with the. I'm going to yeah. second floor on this guy. There you go. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, one man is so good. There, the, whiskey, the whiskey community shits on Dick all the time, but I think that yeah, especially some of their older stuff is it's decent. It's not my favorite thing ever, but it's it's decent. Yeah. I mean, look, it, just so you know, Sean, because of the whiskey community, I've never actually tried Dickel. I mean, George Dickel might have liked being shit on, but who knows that? I don't, <laughs> I don't know. 
Hey, 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 all of you, all of you, uh, bro, it's 11.09 and where I am, and mm -hmm. I'm still sick as a dog, even though my dumb ass was drinking. Uh, Sean. John, yes, sir. And John that I know from Wisconsin. And yep, I'm about three and a half hours uh, north of you. So, uh, yep. The young man above me, um, you guys, you guys be good. I am actually going to uh, get the fuck out of here. That's all, all right. right. And and look here, Sean. I haven't seen your ass in forever. I know, man. It's been too long. I haven't seen Sean's ass in quite a while. I, I mean, don't want to see Sean's I ass did. ever. You know, <laughs> I, I don't. I don't know what your story is, but damn it, I'll tease you later. Well, so real quick, Derek, before you hop off, the reason. Well, I mean, Here's the reason. You have to the reasons, but I, I was actually uh, MIA for a little while. My, my dad was going through some heart stuff, and we were in the hospital, and that's, that's the short version of it, but it, it got pretty, well, it got really serious. He went into cardiac arrest last Wednesday, but... Oh, jeez. Okay. I was trying to stop you for, before you got there. You know, for future reference, for at least rational people, family shit is good enough. Yeah. Okay. And I'm and you know, Sean, I'm not picking on you. I I, I hear you. God damn it, when you you talk about a cardiac arrest, I'm like, oh no. Okay. I, I, that that make, that means I gotta get another drink. <laughs> you don't have to. You can go to bed there, guy. I won't hold it against you. No, 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 uh, no. I'm I'm gonna hang up, but I'm probably gonna get another drink. I will say this. Um, I missed you. And I wish your family well. Right back at you, and, brother. And it's and I and that. I hope I hope the 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 situation that you vaguely mentioned, I hope it end well. It ended well. He, he's it, he's it doing well. much better now. All yeah. right, all right, all right. That's good enough. That means I'll get a half a drink. All right, all right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he, he, I mean, you know, he's not. One can only do so great after that kind of a situation, but he's he's doing as good as you could hope. You know, I, you know what? You know what, Sean? I 100% understand that. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Hey, do me a favor if you don't mind. Yes, sir. Fuck us. Hang out with your family a bit. Oh, oh okay. I, yeah. And I mean that sincerely. I can, I'm, I hang, can out with, that. hang out with your kin people. I can I very Love, much agree with that. Love on each other, okay, yeah. and embrace mm. each other, and and I, I believe that, <laughs> and I believe everyone who's here will be here when you get back. Great. Hear that, man? Mm -hmm. Hey, we got Bill in the house. What's up, buddy? All right. Hey, Sean, oh. you baby. be good. Hey, yeah, you hey, too, Derek. Derek. Good, Derek. To see you, man. good to see you, man. It's been it's been too long, as you Take said. Take care, man. Hey, Derek. Be well. Thanks, John, J. Max, yep. Jonathan. You guys take care. Sure, yeah, take care, man. I'm going to work tomorrow. Be good, all right, all right, Gordo. Good to Cheers, see you, man. Gordo. Bye, Gordo. Cheers. Hi, fellas. I'm trying to figure out what Bill has going on here. What is what is this here? Dude, this <laughs> is... Oh, your belt, man. Yeah. Oh. The Mid-South mid belt. Mid yeah. South. That's the Mid-South Championship. <laughs> That's right. Hell yeah. Next, next thing you know, he'll be Dan Shook and have a sword. <laughs> I think Bill could take Dan. I have faith in him. <laughs> I don't know. Dan, Dan seems like he's crazy. So. Yeah, but but Bill's tall though. You know. So. <laughs> I, I think he's got. I this. think we're the same height. I think Shook's like six four. Also. Oh, is he? Yeah, Dan, Dan's taller than you would think. You meet him in person. I met him last year at Sagamore, and I was like, damn. Yeah. I just figured that Sean was really short, but okay. <laughs> Don't talk about his intelligence. I, saw Derek, I, I, had, to grab the, uh, I had to grab that Mid-South when I saw Derek. Hey, and uh, Jigs, if you're still here, man, uh, Cheers to you, buddy. Thank you again for. Hey everything. Woods, if you're going Belconas High Rye, I got the Belconas Peated Single Malts. There you go. 
He's looking for something to tap that. So here you go, Matt. There you go. And uh, and Woods, I must have been really drunk because I, I don't remember the last time I wore tidy whities. Um, <laughs> I don't know that was still a thing. It's been like three decades, I think. Um, yeah, there we go. Uh, I think I'm just going to grab another beer though, because I I do need to be up early, and I'm feeling pretty good already. I've been. Are you are you working tomorrow? Or are you going to see your dad? No. So here's here's the thing that makes things complicated is that I have to like run the business now. So I mean, he like we were in the process of me taking over anyway when all this kind of started happening. So like the the goal was like May he was going to be completely backed out and I was going to be taking over. So we were already kind of in that transition, but nonetheless, so I have to kind of keep the business going, especially now. So I will, I will be working tomorrow. Yeah. Understood. Yeah. What is your family business? Uh, we do construction. So if it involves a house, we do it. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, primarily like uh, remodeling and things like that. What's, uh, what's, what's the specialty? Is it roofing, framing, finish, drywall? I would say my my area of expertise is primarily framing, drywall, trim work. Um, but we do everything. Uh, although I've done a lot of plumbing as well, so I don't like it, but I'm good at it. Um, electrical is probably where I'm weakest at, although I've done plumbing. Uh, well, I'm I'm fine at it. It's just I don't like doing it. Um, I, I I think my own personal experience being a landlord for 20 years is uh, is I'm pretty good at electrical, and uh, I, for some reason I'm good at plastering. But I, other than that, I'm I'll fall out a window. I have fallen out of a window and broken some ribs. That I'm I shouldn't do construction at all. I'm surprised I haven't burnt a house down by now. But. Hey, Sean, look at uh, what's the comment there. Uh, Came real close to picking up the Belcom SP, but a lower price tag. It's is worth bit... every single penny. Oh yeah, man. Uh, it would. I mean, given stuff I know that you like, even if you can get Great Shot to give you a sample. But... Yeah, I mean, this is one of my favorite bottles ever. What are you getting on the nose on that, John? Well, here let's let's talk about it, shall we? This is think... more like a cherry wood barbecue smoke. Oh wow. Any fruit besides the cherry? No, this is more cherry, a little bit of smoke. It's so it's a Texas single malt, but it's got peated malt from the UK in it. Okay. But it's got those Texas single malt funk notes to it. Well, Woods, I, I will say that, you know, generally Sean's we... got the same bottles I do. They both came from Great Chat. Yeah. Woods, I, I will say, you know, me and you typically spend about the same amount on bottles. I'm not into the super bougie stuff, as you know. But yeah, but I've this, got the 22 bottle, the newer one, Sean. Yeah, I, I'm on the same one. Uh, okay. The the latest one that Great Shot sent us. I mean, the uh, the first one is so good, though. Yeah, I I do still prefer the first one. Mm -hmm. um, this one has a little bit more of that. I guess you would call it medicinal note to the smoke. Mm. Um, well, see, I get a cherry smoke note, but I really don't get the iodine and the band aids on this. Mm. Well, let me let me get into it here. I think it's mainly on the hey, nose. That's... Cheers, Joe. Cheers, Joe. Hey, Joe in the house. Yeah, this is one. Um, if you like Pete, Jonathan, you are really love this. I go to Pete like every so often. It's not my every day, but like it's yeah. always it's always nice. I do have some scotch. What's up, Lee? I uh I do have some scotch samples up here that came from Peter B. Okay. Got a Kilcarran eight year finished in a bourbon cask. That's peated. Nice. I've got the end of a uh, Kilcarran eight that's finished in cherry. Oh, so we had that as a poor um, <laughs> the day of that accident. And the uh, first one of the cherry, the fifty-seven point one. My God, is that good? I, I mean, I smelled both noses, and I I think I like the sherry one better. The other I one, think I think I've got about two pours left, and I'm sending the end of that bottle to Great Chat. Okay, uh, yeah, I I want to get a bottle of that at some point when when 
you know, I'm, I'm back to work. When I'm back to work and, and can comfortably. Uh, all the, um, yeah, the, all the Campbelltown and a Sherry Casket are really good. Anything about Highland Park cast strength, batch three? Oh, I haven't had batch three. I have batch one here, but it's 64, awesome. 64 proof. Bill, I'm just realizing I've never seen your whiskey room before today. That's a, it's quite a setup you got behind you there, man. <laughs> yeah, Jonathan, I batch one at 63%. Oh, hey, uh, if you love Highland Park, show. it's so good. A couple weeks ago. It smells great. Yeah, man. Hell yeah. Look at that belt. Yeah. Belt up there. All the bottle. Yeah. What is that? A tin cup 14? Up uh, on the top, top yeah, there next to the Taylor. Yeah, my girlfriend likes the tin cup stuff. Up there too. Yeah. Which he is telling you guys said about that. Low proof. And then she likes a fucking obtainium like 157 proof. Like she goes right. opposite oh, yeah. end of the spectrum. Which so what's uh, the EH Taylor uh, tube sitting up there? Three three small batch and a single barrel. Okay. Uh, I've been trying we, to trade the small batch all week for Jack Daniels 10 and 12 shit. Okay. Good luck there. Um, which batch of uh, Russell's 13 do you have? I, I looked at the laser codes one night when I was drunk, but I'm not sure. There is a website where you can Google it. I think like batch one might have like 20 year whiskey in it. Mm. I think it was like four and two, maybe. Okay. I almost bought one. another one today. Uh, the dude, because I go on the Houston secondary pages, the guy wanted like 240 for a bottle, and I thought about it. I, I think like I, 200 uh, is probably the, the most to pay. There, there is a raffle coming up. Which I have like eleven entries for, um, <laughs> and uh, there's two bottles of Russell 13 that they're selling for a buck and buck twenty, which is great. Oh yeah, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, yeah if I, I if got I a, getting, uh, if a I Jack getting, twice barreled off a raffle like a week or two ago. I picked I picked that bottle up for a hundred dollars and I traded it for a midwinners and I kind of hated myself because that bottle was a letdown to me. Mm, yeah, um, but I, like, I was I like midwinners. I, I, I don't mind midwinters, but I was just sent a sample of Sagamore Port, and that bottle smokes midwinters. Yeah, oh, Sagamore yeah. Port will ship midwinters so back up the street and down the other. Uh, I, al I also got a sample of this, which is uh, Boonahab and Cast Strength. Oh, yeah, that's great. I never had nice. it. Never had it. Might take a... How many, how many years is that that particular Cast Strength? I have no idea. Oh, okay. All of it. Oh, I had the 2022 from Pinch Hitter, and it was just a freaking is, cherry bomb. This is the 2022. Oh, uh, no, this is 2023. Excuse me. Boone is. So now you've got another one, Jonathan. Come on. Wow. It's got a nose. Like, this is one of these uh, pours that I don't want to drink. I just want to keep smelling. Yeah. Or John go. He probably went to go grab a Boone Haben. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Same. Probably. Does so this John, mic sound okay? Yeah, no, it sounds good, man. Okay. So cool. Jonathan, we do a sample swap. I bought yeah. this a couple of years ago as a Christmas present to myself. Whoa! Uh, twenty five. Wow. What? There the you fuck? go. Twenty five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dude, this, if you like Boona, this is freaking amazing. Go, go, go slow with that one. That one seems like it's a, about half a bottle. So she's an expensive gal, I'm guessing. I, don't so know, I got that from Whiskey Roll. It's only like three sixty, three seventy. Really, actually, wasn't that bad. So, mm. What about the cost of blends? I mean, a McAllen twenty five or a Highland Park twenty five is like three times that. Yeah. So, Bill, now that you have the mic and the shelf set up, when are you starting the channel? <laughs> uh, so, so I also have a sound card thing too, but I'm trying to make the mic plug into the sound card. It plays a couple right. of like weird little songs and shit um someone gave it all to my girlfriend to start like she does like sound healing like hippie shit with drums you know okay and i was trying to set it up for her <laughs> that sounds like some uh, hippie shit <laughs> God, <I'm> hippie. <laughs> no yeah, i mean like like hippie chicks are great i, I just to set like, her up for that. they all work at trader oh, joe's man they all work at trader joe's <laughs> Like I, I I can't I can't deal with the hippie dudes like that's where they're all just making artisanal go to I just, I, just I, I have a question I have a question how do you how can you differentiate the difference between the two of them? 
Oh, she's no, hey. uh, super clean and feminine. <laughs> she's yeah. very clean and feminine. <laughs> yeah, I, and I don't mean any disrespect by this, but uh, yes, but Bill has a, a very good looking girl, so you know he, he's done well. So there you go. Wow. Oh, I definitely dated the, up. You ever see the meme where it's like I farted in the cheese aisle at Trader Joe's, and all the hippies came in? And said, I can't believe how good the cheese smells here. It's just- <laughs> <laughs> Some really well laid Buddha on aisle three. Uh, this Buna cast strength, I can't believe how confectionery sweet it is. Nice. I'm kind of at a loss. You know, like. Like powder like, sugars? Yeah. Yeah. Like I held it for a bit and I was like, it just kept getting sweeter and sweeter. It wasn't until the finish did that change. That I mean, it's 60 percent. That's banana land, easy to drink. Yeah. So, John, uh, on, on the second bottle of the Balcones Pita, I will say it, it's not so much that it's medicinal. There's a, a hint, like right before you swallow. You know, it's in the back of your your tongue. That's what she said. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, there's just <laughs> thank there's, you. I didn't have to say. There, there's just a hint of that <laughs> Lafroig smoke note that I don't appreciate. Okay. Um, yeah, the, the first one is where I really got the cherry wood. Kind yeah. of if you've got smoke pellets or uh, Lafroid smoke is 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 a little, it's a little aggressive. Well, it's not so much that it's aggressive. It, it's just oh, I, don't, I don't like the profile because I mean I think Ardbeg, as far as peat profile, is more aggressive, but it's not offensive to me. I so. wouldn't know. The only Ardbeg I drink is Ugadal. <laughs> okay, oh, see, Ugadal is the only one I hated peat till I had Ugadal, and then it kept the door open. Yeah, I mean, peat is not the dominant flavor in that whiskey. No, that's that's a brisket, you know. That yeah, barbecue. I think there's the Ugadal's got sherry cast, and I think that's what opens it up. And the sherry butts are great. I uh, yeah. <clears throat> I had a, a local cop friend of mine over. We were sitting out with the garage door open, <laughs> having a cigar at nine a.m., drinking uh, our big Ugadal, and I was like, "This is a great day." <laughs> I did not do much work that day either. <laughs> a fantastic day. I used to do that after working graveyard shift. Come home in the morning. Yep. You know. I hey, mean, Bill. I thought uh, walk out the yard with like a glass art bag or something. Neighbors be like, "It's eight a.m." I'm like, "Yeah, I just got off of work. What do you What do you complain?" Yeah, you know, he would he would work, you know, into the wee hours of the night, and you know, he's in yeah. in town, and I was like, "Hey, man, you know, got a wife and kid at home. You want to blow off some steam? Come on over." So. Well, we were we were in the Airbnb, and me and my sister were up late one of the nights. I don't even remember what it was, and uh, we were flipping the, through the channels. And I we got to um, what's it called, uh, Storage Wars, and I thought of you. And I know I know that's not exactly what you do, but I <laughs> yeah, dude, so much like okay, that's a crazy sex chair that came out of some house. There you go, yeah, dude. I just got. This- this chair is like brand new. It came from a place last week. I was like, I'll fucking take it. Like, yeah, man. So much shit, dude. Even today. I little... um, I... Sorry, go. I, I was going to say, you, you got a whole bunch of, you know, secondhand stuff. I, I go check out, um, you know, out of the two hours I work every day, I go check out this listing uh, with a guy that, you know, I hadn't talked to in years. And there's an oil tank. On the deck, and I says, "Why is there an oil tank on the deck?" He's like, "Well, we were gonna replace it. You know, I got it for free." And I'm like, "What are you doing with it?" He's like, "I gotta haul it out of here." He's like, "Do you know somebody who recycles?" And I'm like, "How old's the oil tank? It's not that old. It, it's got to be like four years old, never been used." And uh, guess who needs a new oil tank? This guy. There you go, dude. So he's like, That's he's like, works, you know, some- He says, "You have someone pick it up." And I'm like, "So I've been calling my plumber friends, and you know, a new oil tank installed is like three grand." And I'm like. If I, if I can get that done for half price, um, my oil tank is old. So yeah, cool man. Yeah, not a storage unit, but Dude, random. even um, I live in a trailer house, right? And people have called me to come take trailer houses, and it's been close to where I'm like, we could swap out our whole fucking house. Like, like we could swap out the whole fucking house. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Where do you live? Um, outside sure. Houston. Okay. I've been to Houston once. I've been to Galveston once as well. Galveston's all right. I like the like historic district. It's cool. 
Yeah. Houston's a little cutthroat, um, but but it's cool. Yeah, I mean Houston. I went to see the Astros play back when I don't, I don't mind Simmons it. I there. like it. And every time you went to a titty bar, they'd be like, "I'll have sex for money," and I'm like, "How about you get a, you know some teeth, lady?" Yeah. yeah. Are you paying for crack in there? Yeah, there's crack whores all over Street Houston. Walkers, it was it was yeah it was, it was sketchy. Dude. Yeah, it was sketchy. Yeah. I mean, you know, I don't, it's it's weird to me that that's appealing to any guy because, like, my question is always like, "What number are you tonight?" Um, you know, <laughs> it's like how many how many times has she offered that just tonight? <laughs> like, that's just such a gross thought to me. Like, ugh. Yeah, when she burps, you know who she was with. <laughs> yeah, oh. I can My taste. Yeah, I can smell the last guy's DNA on your breath. Um, can you back up a little bit, ma'am? It's like we do the Irish whiskey streams, and they talk about like power of three swallows. I'm like, you know, I had a hooker call me that once. That was, <laughs> was three swallows. Hey, Sean, Sean, you're officially back in, on brand right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, we uh, back. I, I'm, I'm we're, feeling pretty good right now. We're still on YouTube, right? Oh we're yeah, for sure. We're definitely YouTube. live. I mean, not that okay, I give a shit, but yes, we're we're definitely live. <laughs> I was gonna share a story, but I'm I'll wait. I, I can I can kill it. There's only twelve people watching, and five of them are us. Um, so. <laughs> we're changing the world right now. What are you talking about? Yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, we're do, we're doing great. Oh, yeah, we're, the world. <laughs> we're we're definitely. I used to have a uh, a grow house, right? Mm -hmm. And my roommate my roommate would pick up the girls coming up and down the street, and uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't touch them. And I was drunk one night, and one of them was like all over me. And she comes in the bathroom behind me, and she was like, "I'll pay you." <laughs> what? Stay away. <laughs> wow. Like, yeah, I wouldn't know. No. Not for free, not for money. I'm good. Yeah. She was like, "What? What is that?" And I'm just like, "No." So like, I'll pay you for that. And I'm like, "Nah, nah no." <laughs> they call me Snake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> snake snake Plissken at your service. What was, that, what was that movie that had Goldberg in it? And uh they're like they call him the hammer. Um ready to rumble? Is that it? I thought you were talking about Jesse Ventura from like Major League or no, something. No, it's it's like uh, uh they're 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 I don't remember the movie. I remember they're all in jail. And like Goldberg, like walks out of the shower. Obviously, don't oh, show it. Longest yard. Mm. Yeah, there you go. There yeah, is. they're like they call him the hammer. Yeah. Uh, this Buna cask strength, it, it just smells and tastes a bit like honey. Awesome. Right. There you go. Yeah. They call me Rumble Foreskin. <laughs> Rumble Foreskin. I'm gonna grab a beer, fellas. I'll be right back. Nah, bro. It's my favorite fairy tale, Rumpel Forskip. Uh, I, I think I know John's answer because of where he lives, but what's everyone's favorite light beer? Well, obviously Z-Man, but yeah. Stop. Light uh, beer? I don't, have, I don't have a favorite light beer. Okay. Yeah, no shit. Don't say no shit. I don't drink much beer. Um, Lone Star Light? I don't, I don't drink a lot of beer. <laughs> I might drink a six pack a year. Like I don't. I'm I probably don't gonna. I'm probably gonna get cut off of this America station here. But I'm a. I mean, I'd probably say Michelob Ultra actually more than Miller Light. Wait, say that one more time, Dan. Like, you are communist. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to <laughs> Eat a dick. <laughs> no, I know better. Give you a hard time. <laughs> no, man. Like, so if it was an American beer, I'd probably cool it. Right? There you go. I mean, yeah, I mean like, easy to drink. I'm probably I'm more of Miss Ultra dude. these days. So these were on sale at my local Kroger, and I saw them on sale. And like, so I only buy light beer now, just as like something to drink when I'm in between whiskey, um, just to like keep my mouth yeah, wet. Um, and I saw these on sale, and I was like, Z Man will appreciate this, so I I had to grab them. There you go. <laughs> you got to have the, the Miller lights, you know, light spell wasn't wrong. It the, uh, was it a few days ago, Z Man, you were doing the blind flight? Yeah, I did it on Big Stream. Like, yeah, the blind flight whiskeys. And I'm like, okay, like, 
<laughs> Sample two is less filling, but number three tastes great. Oh, he's sending good stuff. Man. It's like already pre-programmed. <laughs> I love it. He, what, what he did was is he told me what it was, but he wouldn't tell me the order. So he goes, just pull them all out. We'll try them out. And I'm like, Fuck I'm like, yeah, that's on stag. That's on stag. Yeah. Oh no, it was well. The stag, stag was like number one, and it was oh, there was an Elmer Lee in there, and I've never had that shit. And it was delish, man. Uh, I, hope, like, I mean, I used to like Elmer, but I mean, it's ninety proof. I got a bottle of it. And think, eh. No, it's not as exciting as I thought it would be. Yeah, but that sure. that, that, that stag stood out, man. It was fucking good. Oh, well, stag junior oh, yeah. is gonna be good. Man. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I really think that's some of the best stuff that Buffalo Trace does. That's accessible, sort of. I yeah, mean, it was like it was like, for, it was like more, for more, more so than you know the just like you know. Uh, guys, have you had Blanton straight from the barrel? Yes. Yeah, it's hard to like, get. I yeah. like the Blanton's picks, man. The Blanton's picks for are sure, good, dude. Sure, Joe. <laughs> Joe, there you go. Yeah, I, I was gonna say that's what she said. I forgot. Good call, Joe. You, you gotta have, you know, you gotta have something to keep your mouth wet. Um, I mean, so I think here, what straight from the barrel is the only blends I really like. I, I'm, I'm John. I have to tell you, it's probably the best barrel proof thing I've had by Buffalo Trace, including I love E. H. Taylor, but that that bottle of straight from the barrel. Okay. And I opened that and all I could smell was like grape candy. It was insane. Yeah, I mean, I've had a couple of George T stags. I haven't had a, a WLW. That, that's my, I don't want to say my unicorn, but once I get a pour of that, I'm pretty much done chasing. I've had that, one. That, that's interesting, interesting, Jonathan. I haven't had WLW. So, I, so I, I have a buddy that spends too much on whiskey. And I go visit him. Uh, fairly occasionally, like once a month or so. He lives just a little white ways north of me. And he has all the crazy bottles. He buy, he gets them all every year. Uh, he pays stupid amounts of money for them. And I always try and tell him that it's not worth it. But anyway, he keeps doing it, which I appreciate because I get to try them. Um, so uh, Straight from the Barrels yeah, is the favorite uh, of all the all the, the, the Buffalo Trace stuff. What was that, Bill? Is it out of his pocket? Does he do something to cover it? No, no, he just uh, he make he makes really good money, um, and so like he doesn't care. But no, he, he's paying well above retail for most of the stuff. But yeah, well, I mean, so he here's the kind of money he's making. He gave the uh the Van Winkle, what is it, the fifteen year, thirteen year? What is the what is the year on the rye? Thirteen. Yeah, he just gave it to my brother in law because he liked it, full bottle. <laughs> Um, yeah, I rolled my eyes here now. That's so, a nice guy, man. Yeah, yeah, no, he is. He's he's very generous, he's very willing to share his uh, very expensive whiskey. But so, well, I, I said all that to say that, um, that I don't hear that much that uh, straight from the barrel is, is the favorite of all the, the Buffalo Tray stuff. So, so I mean, that's, so that's not a new thing. No, I mean, usually, you know, people are after the WLW or the GTS or or the H. Taylor Barrel Proof. That's a, a common so, favorite. So my I local mean, store, store owner had all these bottles, you know, you know, and he was just, you know, he had extra from because he has an event coming up. And uh, a couple of, you know, the heavy hitter people who purchased in there took the Pappy 15s and stuff. And, you know, uh, I... I, I just like, I want something good. And he's like, if you want something good, try this. And I remember Durrell telling me a year ago that straight from the barrel was one of his favorites. And I was just like really blown away by it, how drinkable yep. it was. It did yep. not drink 133.6 proof. And it was yep. just, it was a monster. Yep. This is the one I just got from Emanaka uh, that he dropped. Oh yeah. I remember he sent you that. So yeah, luckily I got to try Pappy for the first which, time. Which, which Pappy is that? John, I, so 2022 15. Oh, 15. Okay, I couldn't see. All right. So that's the only Pappy I've ever that's had. I'm grateful for that. That is my favorite of the so Pappy line. Right. What's that? No, no, no. Fi uh, it was the 15 Pappy Ben Winkle. No, the the 13 is lot B or 12. Okay. 12, 12 is lot B. Okay. Yeah, I have a lot B from I think maybe 2019, and and I have to tell you it's it, it's delicate. Like I get notes of honeydew. It's 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 citrusy and 
just gentle. It's it's a good whiskey, but like it's not worth what people are paying for it. No, I, I honestly think that the the old rip and the fifteen are my two favorite of the line. Um, I mean, the fifteen I think is really the standout for me because you know the hundred and seven proof. It's just uh, I want I like I like punchy whiskey, so it's a good uh, proof. Yeah, I um, John, I have to tell you the Highland Park Cask Three. I don't know if I like it better than the Buna, but I I I think I might. It's so very, do you like Highland Park? I don't have a lot of familiarity outside of their okay. very, their baseline stuff, but this this being at sixty four percent, it it is it is complex. So I've got the eighteen, and I've got the batch one of the cast strength, which is sixty three percent. And being a Highland Park fan, I really like batch one. So we can do a sample of that too. I, I, I just I can't. It changed so many times. Yeah, it's lightly peated, but there's so many different cask finishes. On, honestly, you barely even notice the peat until it gets to like the end of the mid palate. Yep, it's wild. It's it's like three different whiskeys in one. Yep. I, I was going to have like uh, one bottles this week. Awesome. I got four more old bottles this week. Yeah. I see both bourbon hall. We got a, oh, yeah, uh, what we got here, old, Bill? Old Evan Williams. There you go. Nice. And the, uh, a Baker's, which I'm about to pop this right now, I think. Oh, yeah, man. The, the old seven, the, the batch yeah, version is so much better yeah. than the new single barrels. 85 this Clyde Mays. This is like fucking gay, gay, gay like apples, dude. This is good as shit. I don't. I didn't know if and he was going to say uh, gay or gay. Well, but then, <laughs> this is gay the well. gayest whiskey I've ever had. <laughs> the this is the fucking the gayest whiskey ever. Hey, uh, quest, it's question about that. gaping whiskey. <laughs> that, that, that baker's look on the back. Does it say 001 or 002 on the back? We, we need Ben with his butt Let's sex check. button so right I'm, now. I mean, does they have like an Oscar Mayer Wiener tasting known or what? Oh, oh, one. <laughs> Excuse oh, me, I have an oh, oh, two. Okay, cool. God bless you. Yeah, I paid one forty for the lot. There goes the fucking cork. Yeah, that that happened. Dump truck, Dave. I don't know who you are, but you really love strip clubs. <laughs> <laughs> but it, like, like, third, like this the, was twenty. The, this was twenty bucks or fifteen bucks. Um, this was the same thing, 20 or 15. I don't remember. I just like the wild turkey because it says 81 on it. Most wild turkeys up here don't say anything, they just, just say yeah. wild turkey. Yeah, I got some wild turkey that it's 81. So. I'll be right back. Yeah, Jonathan, if it just says wild turkey bourbon, it's 81. Yeah, it's either that or the 101. No, I just like the label, you know, that, that defines the 81. I've got a couple of bottles of uh, OGD one one four behind me. Uh, I picked up for Shauna uh, Marie D. If you know her, yeah, there you uh, go. Um, She's good people. Yeah, she uh, she got me a couple of bottles of the uh, the Outrider Wisconsin whiskey. Okay, they were uh, on clearance apparently. Got them for twenty five bucks a piece. Damn, damn. Yeah, she's becoming a friend for sure. Yeah, she's good folks. Mm. What does John got? This is a uh, Jay Mattingly pick. I haven't had anything nice. about that. 13 uh, white whiskey, 139 proof, but I just love it for the name. Just the tip. Which <laughs> actually for a light whiskey, this is really good. Yeah. Tastes I like they get their, their rice whiskey just out of it, curiosity. Tastes like anal. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. I mean, that didn't dissuade me at all, Jonathan. Uh, <laughs> it's like the one time I jumped and giggled and I told the doctor my prostate was ticklish. <laughs> uh, Awkward silence. <laughs> I, I'm curious, dumb truck Dave, speaking of anal. Um, I'm curious, Jonathan. Uh, dumb truck and anal. Well, what the fuck? What what's what's the love of strip clubs? I, I I've never understood it. So 
Um, I mean, is it the smell of bo and burnt fish? Uh, I don't, I don't know. Like, what, 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 what is it that appeals to you about it? Um, or is it the cocaine sweating out of their pores? Um, <laughs> okay, okay. Part of the answer I can't give you on stream. Part of the answer is I, I get to pay a woman and tell her what to do. <laughs> I guess. Uh, I'm sorry. I can't. You got, you got you I mean, the best, the best part of the strip club is the buffet and the box lunch. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, 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 yeah, don't go, don't go to the strip club to and get the box lunch. It's not going to be good. I go, yeah. we, we go down. We go down a rabbit hole with this shit, Sean. Come on now. I mean, I don't think like there's a whole lot of rabbit hole here. Um, and if there is a rabbit hole, if there is a rabbit hole, it's been beat to death. Um, so, uh, has anybody ever watched Eric White's whiskey studies? Yeah, of course. Yeah, he was talking one night in chat. He's like, "Rabbit holes, my pardon." And I'm like, whoa, "Whoa." Yeah, that's the name a... of the club the girl works at. Is rabbit hole? There, there, there was a there was a strip club outside of the Air Force Base down in Tucson. Called the whistle stop, and the girls would dance in the bar, and you could get a to give you a dollar a kiss, and that was in the nineties. And, and that's how yeah I got mono. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it, uh, it, uh, when you're when you're or herpes like that, it's yeah, like, that's how I got herpes, man. That's yeah. Well, fuck you guys, Sean. When, it's, when it's, Chuck, you, you, Sean, you said you want to live a simple, you know, affordable life. You right. Know, clearly, uh, we'd live in different stuff. Like that, I think. Yeah. Well, I mean, also, you know, the drippings don't really add much to the beer. Um, so, <laughs> no fucking what, bro? What the hell? That was let's too much just, visual. Just, just take the visual. Let's and not talk about boiled crabs now either. So, that yeah. too much visual. <laughs> You know, if you if you if you want to have a, it's like it's like a sweaty cocaine turkey. Um. <laughs> so, you can, can I ask you, have you ever Dallas heard of an Alabama, Alabama turkey? I've not. Let's Google. Oh God. Okay, if you want to Google that image, I don't have to send it then. So, <laughs> well, it's been so many holes, so On many. It. <laughs> or Viagra. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Google here, Alabama. Can I spell Alabama right now? Let's see. Alabama. Turkey. We got this. I assume we want. Let's see. What's the thing? What's the Urban Dictionary? That's what we want. There we go. Yeah. Let's let's see what we got here. All right. Let's bring this up. That way the group can see. Um, if not, I've got to dig it in my phone to find it. So. No, I, I got it. I got it. Here we go. Are we sharing? Yeah, there we go. Let's let's uh, do full screen here. Take the <laughs> comment down. Okay, act in which uh, googly eyes are hot glued to the female's labia, resulting in what was it? Uh, spastic flapping. <laughs> <laughs> sound reminiscent yeah. of a gobble. I have the picture in my phone, Sean. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I mean, I I can I I'm I'm picking up the the visual there. My my answer to that is you can. <laughs> I can't even get it out. It's just so bad. You know, I always wonder like who thinks of these things or does them. I don't know both. Uh -huh. Sean, I've I've bunch submitted of, so many. I've submitted so many things to Urban Dictionary over the years, and none of them have gotten approved. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. You can get a good look. <laughs> Never mind. Get a good look. Gross. Get a rib on. I bet she's sticking her head up the picture's ass. Fast as. Oh my god! Hell yeah! Oh man, I don't know which other. Uh, uh. What year is that, Bill? It looks like an old one. It looks sun sticky. Sean, we've done this. <laughs> we've done this before. It's seventy eight. Oh, that's right. We yeah. showed it on your. <laughs> oh, dude, how much bush is in that? <laughs> oh yeah, a lot. You need like a hedge trimmer. We got here. We got a seventy-seven. 
Does well, that girl's don't, don't, don't show pictures? <laughs> that, does that girl's bush have more hair than your beard? No, 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 no. Okay. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> <Those> <laughs> no, no, no curtains. No, no. That, that's fine. No, we can show that. Yeah. That's some no, serious beef curtains. No, I, I think I think if we show nudity, the the stream actually does get nuked. But um. <laughs> yeah, we did that one night. <laughs> it happened, yeah, man. Oh, Bitch is granddad. Yeah. I was cleaning up this room the other day, and I put a crate under here of bullshit because I was I didn't know where to put it. Did you say bullshit or bush shit? <laughs> bullshit. Same same oh. thing. Yeah, oh, both things. Stop! 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 stop. Can we listen to Bush tomorrow? You know, isn't it odd how, like, in just what? What is it? Like, the last four to five decades, how we've just decided that pubic hair is the thing that we don't want to see anymore. Because, like, for the rest of human history, that was just happening. <laughs> it was, And nobody like, flosses anymore, dude. It's a, it's a fucking... Yeah. You, you can blame Gillette. Gillette needs to sell razors, so they changed the culture. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, nobody flossed. nobody has pubic hair and no one's flossing. Just remember, the world only changes because of capitalism. Okay, that's it. Yeah. Fact one. <sighs> one of my buddies called me in. in uh, oh Jesus, Adam, you're still awake. He is. Also, I don't even know what his comments are referring to. I just highlighted it because it was amusing to me. <laughs> I dare you to ask him to explain it. <laughs> oh, I'm, I, if you have the time, Adam, feel free to pop on. Uh, I'd love to hear more about the bitch's granddad. Um, oh, who did we lose? John. Did, you, did John just Irish goodbye on us? No, he's going <laughs> to send us a picture of a fucking turkey flapping. Mm -hmm. oh, probably so, yeah. Oh, no, dude. That's for after party, man. That's for the fucking late stream. The late oh, late so stream. what's up, Bill Scott? Good to see you, man. Jesus. I'm thinking after about doing my... Uh, I got community service to do. I'm thinking about doing community service tomorrow. Okay. I'm sleeping until 10. They got a... Uh, hey, dude, it's actually all right. It's like a 5,000-acre fucking nature preserve. And half oh, of it's getting logs. Are you going to grow weed on it, though? Log. Dude, I would love to, um, but that might get me in more trouble than I've been in. I yeah, probably bro. shouldn't even be here, because if they, like, popped in somehow and saw me drinking, they'd be like, hey, dude, uh, to jail you go. Cheers to that. Yeah, that would suck. But, I mean, I feel like, you know, no one's watching this shit, so I think we're okay. <laughs> yeah. So if you check Messenger, you'll we'll find the Alabama turkeys, so that's... Oh, the picture? Okay. Yeah. I, I had it like, saved, so that, I had to then? take part. Chat? Okay, before I open this up... Here's John, our Facebook Messenger for Jonathan and Sean. So. Okay, before I open this up, is it at least a good-looking vagina? It's just, it's <laughs> just a gift <laughs> file. Sean, so dude, we're, on, we're friends, dude. Where's where's my Alabama turkey? Oh, <laughs> we're Dan, friends, too. Hold on, hold on a minute. If they, if they show it, I'll send it to you, too. So to answer the question, no, it's not. Um, this that thing is, is loose. this thing has seen some trauma. Um, <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. Okay, Bill, I will send it to you. Just give me a second. She's like, dude, I feel like she's one of your her number one people off of whiskey tube. She's like, I want to meet John and have a drink with him. John's good people. Did we talk about OJ Simpson yet? We no. can, dude. The juice, the juice has expired. Time to dude. throw it out. Are they going to give him a ride out in the fucking white Bronco? Like, like fucking put the coffin <laughs> in the Bronco, bro. <laughs> Wait, did, did, did OJ die? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, he died of cancer. No, no. He died on a tent. I, I think Frosty, he grew a tumor he didn't when get he was his in for five years. He died yesterday. He, died he didn't yesterday. go through TSA. It would have been funny if he, he went out by a white woman head. killing him, you know, just as like the circle of life. <laughs> well, and I, and oh, I, no. I was listening to him earlier. He still won't admit to killing her. So I'm like, yeah. Well, He's going would, to hell, but what, whatever, man. Um, well, now he can't admit to it. Bronco. Yeah, but it's like, who the fuck? He's someone else's that? problem now. I mean, yeah. I don't know if he's going to hell. He might have repented it on the bed, but, you know, who the uh, fuck knows? 
I'd say he's Worm's problem now, but uh, <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I, mean, I, would, I, would say, I would say that that's unfortunate, but I have no, like, I mean, I don't know the man, but, uh, you know, I mean, from all accounts, he wasn't a great person. Uh, I mean, everybody that's on screen, no, I have sent it to you. So. Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> Z, God. Z may need some privacy. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, we got, we got nothing <laughs> <in there now. laughs> What's up, fellas? How are we you doing? Like that, Do you like that, Bill? Sean. I got that. Show, show uh, Adam. Oh, is that all? Yeah. Yeah. You need a turkey oh, yeah. banter for that. That's. <laughs> oh, all, all oh, the fellas right now. Turks. What's up, Turks? Stuart. Looking like a freaking hair over there, man. That's my head. Bird That's of the, the week. party I want to be at. Oh, Chris. Yeah. Hey, cheers to everybody we? over there. Where are we? Yeah. Cheers to all of you. The show. Cheers, cheers Adam. Is. The whack. The whack of ass. Yes. <laughs> oh boy. Chris for David Washington. Woo! This is a whack of that. Uh, what's the what's the dustiest bottle in the room, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> Don't put the camera down either. <laughs> well, uh, tell a story, Dan. Or, or oh, show oh, me okay. the dusty. <laughs> show me the dusty. I think he was unzipping his pants. Well, oh, cheers, everybody. <laughs> cheers, everybody there. That's cheers, the dustiest Dirk, thing Dan, in the room. Adam, Ben, uh, Christopher David. Uh, who else was there? Durrell. Um, Adam. Turks. Yeah. I like I said that, right? I like I said that's those a, things. That's a, that's, a, that's a hell of a group. Yeah. yeah. I have to get up and make a pick tomorrow. Well, there you go. Yeah. That'll be fun. Where are they at? Broken Arrow or? Backbone. Backbone. I'm sorry. That's, I should have known. That's the pick crew I would trust. I would trust that pick crew. <sighs> yeah. I would trust them. Oh, my yeah. God, yeah. Mm-hmm. I would. Well, I mean, any back, any pick I've ever had a backbone has been phenomenal. Yeah, they're fucking. I mean, Dan, good. Dan knows his backbone, and you know, obviously, whiskey friends, good palate. The I mean, the, the, I mean the, the straight backbones are really good, but if anyone had the old sherry from Ash and Journey, mm. they should name Power. it. They should name it the Bear Backbone. Whoa, hey. <laughs> <laughs> gig. A what, happen, what happens at night there stays there. I don't want to know. <laughs> yeah, we would hope so. You know, we'll, we'll name it name it after the Thursday night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what really happened? Oh my God. You're right, man. Yeah, Still living. Me. I mean, I mean, Ben hauled out. Yeah, for Ben hauled out his eggplant. You know, it's <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wow. Well. This was unexpected to be on tonight, and uh, thank you, Sean. Yeah, thanks, Sean. yeah, man. Thanks thank you guys it. for hanging out, man. It's uh, yeah. I was only planning to go till like eleven, and I've had a blast. Um, yeah. Got my mind off things. Yeah. yeah. Anytime yeah. your mind is in the wrong place, open Facebook Messenger and look at what John sent you. <laughs> yeah. There you Wham go. Dangling. Yeah. That's a wham you keep it on your phone. That's getting sent to like two hundred people like tomorrow morning. Door, I, I feel like I feel like that's going to be like in the next Arby's commercial. Um, <laughs> I think that's where he got it from. <laughs> we have the meat uh, anyway for sandwiches. Yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. All right, you guys. can't you can't prove that it actually exists though. So. No, you can't. No. Arby's meat or that picture? That picture. <laughs> okay. I have not tried Backbone the Forge. No. Anyone else? No. No, I haven't either. Oh man. We'll see you. Yep. See you guys. Yeah, I'm, glad, I'm glad you're getting better, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. Cool. You know, it was uh, it was a rough week, but things are as good as they possibly could be. So yes, sir. let's keep it that way. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's midnight here. I got to be up at seven. So. Yeah, I, I guess it is about that time. So we're coming up on four hours, right? Yeah, I got four yeah. hours. And, yeah, almost four hours exactly. Yeah. 
So yeah, we'll, we'll kill it here. Thank you everybody for hanging out tonight. Uh, cheers everybody in chat. Cheers everybody on panel. All you folks uh, that have popped in over the night. Appreciate the support yep. and hanging out and talking. Um, and tomorrow we'll uh, get back to what we normally do, just being uh, degenerates and assholes and listening to music and stuff. But uh, thank you for tonight. Really appreciate it. Yep. Cheers, everybody. We're going to close down. Their link is still live if you want to hop backstage. Uh, but yeah, cheers, everybody. Love y'all. Bye, guys. Cheers. Cheers. cheers.